really centered uh, i don't think so i don't think we're centered are we centered now can they see us straight i don't want everyone having to turn their neck and like like find us right so, <laughs> hey everybody welcome to rob's gaming table where we play board games live usually i'm rob i'm mel and we're gonna be playing uh a super simple basic small game called gaia project you know it's not like a 4.3 something complexity pretty big box so many components crazy amount of rules but yeah anyways we're playing it we're playing it today but hello 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 hello, hello everyone alive in the chat already i already chat with a few of you this morning yeah. i was kind of hello, shocked everybody. when i i opened up the stream to just grab the link to share it online and was like oh okay there's already people <laughs> chatting here this is awesome let me get in on this so hello hello welcome welcome uh yes yes Come in, come in. And Tara, you're too kind. Thanks for super chatting, like, before the stream even starts. Like, who does that? You're too kind. You're too kind. Thank you so much Thank for you. the support in the super chat earlier. Uh, Tara's, Tara's happy. I don't know if you can see there, but uh, uh, her name is on the box. Uh, it's a Tara Mystica game. So uh, our producer, Tara Smith, has now claimed that, you know, her name's on the box. So she's officially... It is know, on the box. It's, it's an official Tara Smith game is, is what I'm getting from that. Uh, so it's a yeah that's that's how it's working. Nice quick stream, yes, yeah, Cobra. This one should be super fast, <laughs> super fast. Uh, one thing I mentioned earlier in the chat for those over here, uh, those watching later on YouTube or even those watching right now, if you don't know how this game plays and you're like I want to watch because yesterday and I realized this game is super confusing. That's why there's like 46 how to play videos on YouTube alone. Uh, because the game doesn't have the greatest rule book, it's fine, the rules are there, but it's like, it lacks examples, it lacks tutorial and that kind of stuff. It's very old school, like, it's like a science textbook writer wrote the rules for this game. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, I guess that fits the kind of theme of the game anyway. It's kind of like a dry, you know, point salad space team game anyway, so I guess the rule book kind of matches. Um, uh, but... I linked down below in the video description a 12-minute uh, how to play. It, I don't think it's the best one, but it's only 12 minutes. It'll just take you to a YouTube video. In 12 minutes, you get a, a good idea, a good overview. Uh, they go quick and, and about every little action and stuff. But I think it's the fastest way you'll kind of understand what we're doing today. Uh, we'll kind of give an overview at the beginning, but I'm kind of wanting to get into gameplay pretty quick. Because after yesterday's solo stream of this game, which you can find also down in the video description... Uh, by following the playlist link. Uh, that stream went like six and a half hours playing solo. Of course, we were chatting. I was explaining every decision. We were going back and forth, and we were explaining how the game worked in solo and everything like that. We were looking up rules and, and stuff like that. But uh, now with two people playing, and the AI sometimes can be pretty quick, uh, but with Mel, this is only her second time playing. This yeah. is uh, my second time playing multiplayer. 
Uh, I've played two solo games now. Uh, we're still pretty new to it. We're going to still do the starting map tile setup and everything. Um, but we're not pros at this game. So strategy-wise, we're maybe not going to be as efficient. We're going to have fun with it. Just to show you that don't be scared. It's a four-point whatever complexity level. Don't be scared of this game. Uh, it's Once you play it once and kind of go through the rules, you know, maybe twice, watch a how-to-play video, you can figure it out. It kind of all makes sense. It's a little quirky. The icons are pretty bad in the game. Uh, they don't connect with like, you know, what you'd expect for like gaining things and losing things and spending things. Some of the terminology is a little wonky. Uh, feels like this game needs like a refined like second edition already. I don't know. But uh, anyways, the gameplay is pretty cool. Uh, the depth of strategy in the game is pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty cool for a complex Euro game. I'm, I'm not really, I don't think I'm really like a heavy Euro game player, but I think I'm slowly, slowly slipping into that end of the pool, I guess, <laughs> and not realizing it, the... <laughs> it's just pulling me over there. I don't know, but uh, so yeah. If you want to know how the game works uh, before you start watching, we're definitely gonna be blabbing on here for a few more minutes. You can go watch that twelve-minute how to play video and come back, and then you'll kind of know what goes on. Because in yesterday's solo playthrough, a lot of people were jumping in mid playthrough or watching from the beginning even, and we're like, I don't know what the heck's going on. So it's kind of like you know the theme is like okay, but uh, it it might make more sense if you just go watch that how to play video and then come back. If you're watching live, even if you're watching later on YouTube, just go watch that. Come back to the video. It'll make more sense what we're playing. But I'm not going to explain every rule, every situation. I may, throughout the course of the stream, by us just doing actions, maybe Mel needs an explanation of how this works, or we have to look up something we forget. You will, by the end of the stream, if you don't watch a how to play video or read the rules, you'll understand how the game works in general and decide if it's for you or it's not. Uh, but we're going to just have some fun today playing, trying to mess each other up. It's competitive. It is competitive. It is competitive. Uh, we're trying to take over the galaxy. Um, but there is not much player interaction other than trying to take certain areas on the board from each other or certain special actions are limited to once per round. So the first player to grabs them in a round has them. Um, but yeah. But it's very points, Alan. A lot yeah, of things, yeah. everything just gives you points. Yeah, yeah. It's lots of resource management. Yeah. Yeah. Um, network creation in it like you're building networks on the board um it's it's cool though the components are good you know the, the color is good the art's okay it's fine it's passable yeah, it's okay. um but yeah for the yeah. price i was kind of shocked at like the components and the art and stuff didn't seem like the price of the game but again i got this game for half price because the z-man version which is right here uh, it's now going to be published by Capstone Games in North America. So they were clearing out all the Z-Man copies, which are 99.9% .9 identical. It's literally just the logo of the publisher on the front of the game is changing because it's still the same main publisher in Europe or whatever, but the publisher in North America is changing, but they're not changing the game at all. So, uh, you might be able to find this game like half price. I found it a couple weeks ago, half price in Canada at a local board game store, but I found like three or four, maybe five board game stores that all cut the price. Uh, so it must have been a publisher-wide thing where Asmodee, uh, who owns Z-Man Games, was just deciding to clear it out So because they don't have the rights to it anymore. So you might you might be able to find this game for like half price. And for that, I felt it was worth it. But for full price, dry Euro space theme game, not really up my alley, but I'm so glad I have the game. And thank you to John B for recommending it. And KNG, thank you for the super chat. Keep up the great work. You two are awesome. You're awesome. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but I do appreciate, I believe you, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I agree with your statement. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much, Thank Kanji. you. Thank you. That's very nice. Uh, yeah. I was talking about it in the solo stream yesterday about people be coming and watching, you know, rooting on their, oh, yeah, yeah. their favorite side in this this competitive game and I was assuming basically it's all going to be people rooting for Mel. But I already did say to Rob, I feel he has the advantage here. He has played a few more... Mind you, they were solo, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. still have played more. And yeah. I feel like this game, there is an advantage the more you play and the more you yes, see absolutely. things happen. Absolutely. And you try different strategies. So I have only played once, but I will do my best. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to give Mel <laughs> tips. Give me tips It was if very you want. close when we played. Yeah, 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 it was. It when, was. We, when we played our like practice game, I think I'd only lost by... 15 points yeah, like something, like something very minimal yep it wasn't like you totally but you were crushing me like the whole game yeah it's just at the last round i kind of like did a few things to get the end game goals jump ahead of you yeah and then i scored just those few extra points and, and... i even remember in that game saying i could do this but i think i'm okay to do this and then i should have done the first thing 
But that that's but yeah. what I was saying that a lot in yesterday's solo stream. Uh, we were talking about, I realized this is the kind of game that, yes, your first play is going to be pretty rough. You're going to pick a faction. You're going to make some suboptimal choices. You're going to feel like you're struggling. The AI or the other players at the table may be crushing you. But it's the type of game you, you, you like, as soon as you're done, you're like, I want to play again uh, soon. Maybe not the same day because it might take you like three or four hours to play this game. Um, but you want to play again. And it definitely rewards repeated plays. Yeah. And there's 14 freaking unique factions. And if you're playing solo with this game, there are seven different AI factions you can play against. And like four or five different difficulty levels. So the solo of this game, I say it's fiddly. I don't really prefer solo that has a, like a, you know, an extra eight page rule book involved. But if you buy this game and you're only playing solo, there is a ton of replayability there because the random setup of the board, the goals, uh, the tracks, the rewards, the faction options of 14 of them, playing against the seven different AIs. There's, it's just like, you, that's why this game is as top on BGG, um, which I can show you, let me open here. Like the replayability is nuts. That's why this game, 2017 game, is number eight of all time ranked on BGG, as you've seen here, and the strategy number seven. Because you could just, and it, and it shines at multiplayer. People are saying right here, it says best three to four. A lot of people are coming in my solo stream yesterday, uh, commenting, saying the game shines more at multiplayer than it does solo. But the solo is still fine. You you just played a couple times. You learn the quirks of it, the the you know the priority of how the AI works. And once you played a few times, it becomes second nature. And you could just play this game over and over trying different factions and strategies and just having fun upping the difficulty of the AI. I think the solo offering here is, is huge. I don't know if like, you know, full price versus a solo offering. I still think there's a value there as long as you like this type of game. Um, but yeah, it's very crunchy. It's very good. But as you see there, the weight is 4.35. We talked about it yesterday. Some of the other games we played on the channel uh, over the last little bit that are in this same difficulty range. Uh, we have streams on the channel with Mel and I and Solo Mage Knight, War of the Ring playthroughs like Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, what else was up in that Cloud Spire we've played recently on the channel? All these games are like 4. you know, 2, 4.4, 4.5. Um, this is right up there with that. But I feel it's not as bad to learn and start playing. The the like no. the and the learning curve to get the game to the table and play it is pretty low. It's not like as high as Cloud Spire or Mage Knight, I feel, where you have to go like sign up for a course at a university. You know, t attend two semesters at least, pass some final exams. Then you can sit down and play your first game of Cloud Spire, your first game of Mage Knight. And don't tell me that walkthrough of Mage Knight's any good. Get the hell out of here. Uh, but this game doesn't have that stuff either. But I feel like a pass through the rule book, you can slap this on the table and start playing. Yeah, you'll do crap, but uh, you can get this to the game to the table and teach another player pretty quickly. It's just, you'll play the first game and be like, I kind of don't understand and stuff. And you might have to look up a few appendix entries. Um, but you can, uh, you'll want to play this game again because you'll start understanding the complexity of it and the strategy is not that bad, but it's like the options are like endless, it feels, um, which is cool. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it so far. Um, just to let you guys know who those are tuning in in the stream and going, what the hell is Guy Project and why are they playing this game who didn't see the stream yesterday uh, where we played solo? Uh, you can leave now if you're only curious, like what my thoughts are on the game. That's where I'm at right now. Um, and yeah, I only have... Two solo games and one multiplayer game under my belt. So they're like I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface. Um, so yeah, there you go. But yeah, I literally opened the game. I opened the game like one afternoon, um, and then like the next day, like read and got on the table and played it solo. And I was already ready after that one solo game to teach Mel. And like I didn't need to reread the rules. Or I feel it was like I read like parts of it, and then I was able to teach Mel play a whole game. And she only read like half the rule yeah, book. Yeah, I only read half the rule book and he taught me how to play and then we played and yeah. I was able to fully pick up the game. There was a few symbols that I didn't really I'd have we'd have to, I'd have to ask, but yep. the, for the most part it but was. The appendix is good and, yeah. and the way they put it at the back of the rule book, quickly you can open it, read what a symbol means or what the track means or what your faction ability means. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Yeah. Uh, but I just comparing like why I'm saying that I was able to open it, learn it, and we play both solo and co op is that I don't expect that ever to happen, usually from a five or four point Three five complexity game. So some people yesterday in the chat were talking about this game's really only like a three point five, 
in multiplayer maybe, but I, I argue that the 4.35 is also the solo complexity of the extra like eight pages yeah. of weird rules you have to learn for running the AI uh, adds more complexity to the overall package. Overall package. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this game I was shocked. Like, because normally when Amel knows when it's like I decide this week I'm gonna learn a 4.4 .4 whatever <laughs> complexity game. Uh, I literally, it's like I know it's gonna take a couple days of literally like full days of like reading, rereading, going on BGG, looking at the file section, reading rules, finding an FAQ, reading other players' player guides, watching some how to play videos if possible, maybe some playthroughs, playing through it myself once, rereading the rules again, playing again. Before I feel like comfortable, especially if it's just solo and I have to run an AI on top of that, to like go from taking off the shrink to playing on the channel, I have like a process. That it does need to be refined and more efficient. Uh, maybe it's my lack of ability to retain information. I don't know. But uh, I was shocked at how quickly I was able to play, learn this game and get it to the table and play it and understand it. Um, so I don't know. Maybe the rules are better than I'm giving them credit for or the design of the game is better, but... Um, don't let this 4.35 scare you is what I'm saying. No. I feel like it is probably more of a late threes maybe to, to learn it and get into it. Yeah, there's strategy here, but you yeah. pick that up as you go. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, lots of good how to play videos out there. Um, if you want, there's one uh, we were looking at this morning was uh, Meeple University. Uh, I can see nobody's clicking on it really because it is a four, 57 minute long video. But he goes through it like a dry college professor. Like, you might fall asleep while watching it. But from what I watched, he literally went over every single situation, does recap, goes over all the weird scenarios, talks about what has changed from the first printing to, like, errata. Um, but if you really want to get into this game, spend an hour, watch that how-to-play video. Might be even better than watching than reading the rule book. Because uh, he's very thorough in that one. So there are the 12-minute, the five, the 15-minute how-to-play videos, but the 57-ish whatever one I saw, we watched a bit of it. I mean, yeah, it, it's dry, you know, it's a little maybe dated, but uh, it, it goes over everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was very impressed by the amount of information in there. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, Joseph's asking, have you guys played Terra Mystica? No. No, no, no. no. Uh, Terra Mystica is one I've heard mentioned over the years since we've been in the tabletop gaming hobby for like 10 years. Uh, it was one that was mentioned when we were getting into the hobby. People would tell me about it at like our weekly board game meetup at our local stores. I would see it on the shelf. People would talk about, have you played Terra Mystica? It's really cool. And I remember when we when I really got addicted to Scythe and it became one of my favorite games, uh, to learn when I read about Jamie Stegmaier talking about the game is basically he ripped off like uh, Terra Mystica. And there was a couple other games. I think there was like two or three, maybe it was one or two other games. And I can't remember what they were. But I remember Terra Mystica was a heavy inspiration for Scythe. Um, and that was like, whoa, maybe I need to get this game. I looked into Terra Mystica. It looked kind of boring. So I said, no, I have Scythe. I, I don't need Terra Mystica. I need some combat. I need some more player interaction. Uh, and I just felt it looked better, played better, and felt better than what I felt Terra Mystica could offer. But then Gaia Project came around. People were mentioning Gaia Project's like a better version of Terra Mystica. It's very similar, but more refined. And it's rated higher on BGG. I've been recommended more about Gaia Project than Terra Mystica. I don't think it, on the channel anyone has really said, Rob, you should play Terra Mystica. I feel I like not a so. single person has ever mentioned that game no. on here. But in person, people have been mentioning over the years. But I haven't heard anyone mention it to me in like eight years, maybe. Uh, and Terra Mystica is from 2012. And this game's from 2017. So obviously five years later, they decide to like slap a space theme on it, change some of the rules, supposedly. So if you already own Terra Mystica, maybe you don't care about Gaia Project or vice versa. So I'll probably never go play Terra Mystica or try to get it or anything like that. Unless I found like a used copy for like 20 bucks or something, maybe I'd try it. Um, but this game's fine. I don't I don't need like the same game. Yes, I love fantasy theme, but like in a point salad kind of game, like does it really matter what the theme is? Not really. So uh, this game's fine. Looks good. I'll just, I'll just play this game. But yeah, if you're looking for a fantasy version of this, as you see at the top here, at the top of the screen, it re-implements Terra Mystica. For those that don't know, whoops. I meant to click this one. So Terra Mystica, here we are, 2012. It is 16th overall uh, on BGG still after coming out in 2012. So it's not a bad game. And if you already own it, you're fine. It is also published by Capstone Games now. It looks like that also changed. Uh, in Europe or whatever, it's, it's published by... Velko is correcting this, the pronunciation. I think it's putting like a D in this name because I, I wasn't seeing the name. But it's like Führerland Spiel. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But anyways... I really don't care if I'm saying it right, to be honest. <laughs> um, but anyways, 
Uh, that's who publishes it everywhere else, and they've decided to, I guess, pull it or Zemian or Asmodee try is not republishing it anymore. So it's Capstone Games now. So you should, if you find the game has the CG on it. Um, so yeah, but yeah, 16 overall, 15 in strategy. It looks like the weight's a little lighter, but I mean, and still, it's better like multiplayer. But oh, the oh, it's... solo in this is no good, or it doesn't have solo. Oh, maybe that's why the other one's better. Yeah, it probably is a solo community more behind Gaia. I bet. I bet that's where all the love is coming from. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Or or did they add a, a Terra Mystica solo in an expansion? Does anyone know in the chat? Maybe that's also why it's rated higher too, because if they are taking that solo into account, that's like you I'm said, saying. like yeah, that's three point nine six. No, more hardcores will be following it and rating it and playing it if it has solo mode now. Even before COVID, but COVID definitely jacked up the like. If your game doesn't have a solo mode, you're you're like hurting your your sales for sure. Yeah. Um, because there's Kickstarters now I see that are competitive games with no a, a solo or an afterthought of solo or no co-op, and I instantly am like I'm not backing your game even if I don't get your game for like two years. I don't know what the world's going to look like then. I don't know if I'm going to be in, like, lockdown number 16 and whatever. And, like, we need another vaccine because there's more variants that don't work with the vaccine I'm getting already. Like, who the hell knows what the world's going to look like? So if you're not putting solo and co-op, or at least the competitive works good at two-player, uh, you know, for most households that are, you know, not, you know... Following COVID guidelines, I guess, <laughs> depending where you live and what's going on with the world, you're missing out. Like, you need to work that in your game from the start. Not an afterthought, not an expansion. Games need to have the one player number on them. Figure it out. Like, figure it out. Like, you're stupid if you're not doing it. Uh, I, I, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> I am seeing that there was no solo, but fan made solo. Oh, a fan made solo. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not like an expansion for it or something. Kate says, don't joke around about more lockdowns, Rob. It's never ending. It is never ending. We, yeah, we hear you. We're still on lockdown here, too. It's killing me. You don't it's, understand. Yeah. Like, I'm joking, but, like, I literally bang my head against the wall like, three times a day. Every day I wake up, I'm just like, ugh. Like, I want to play with my friends. <laughs> like, I got Justin messaging us, like, hey, when's Frosthaven coming out? I'm like, don't worry, man. It's getting delayed again. Like, whatever. You don't worry. Like, we'll, we'll see you when it comes out, hopefully, by then. But even then, I'm not sure. But it's just like, move to Florida. Move to Get out of here. No way. <laughs> I would love to move to Florida for the weather. But Except that's... for hurricane season, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, I guess. That's true. But yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what else. Did we kill enough time for everyone who needed to? Go watch that 12-minute How to Play video. Again, it's linked in the video description. For those who need a 12-minute how-to-play video before we get into this, go watch it, come back. Uh, if you're watching live or watch it later, whatever. Um, but yeah, let's get into some Gaia Project. All right. Okay. So right away you know it's possibly a dry Euro or like a Euro game, point salad game, when, of course, they have a giant point track around the outside of the board. Okay. Yeah. I used to have a rule when I first got in the tabletop gaming hobby to never play games that had cubes in them. This one has cubes. But it has some cool. But they shaped and funny. It has some cool looking cubes. Yeah. But it also has like these cubes or your satellites, kind of lame, but still. Uh, but I also kind of had a sub rule that I would never own or buy or care about games that had a point track around the outside of the board. <laughs> but somehow a bunch of those have snuck their way into my collection over like the last year or so. Uh, where I've given in and I start playing games with cubes and and stuff, but they're definitely not what got me into the hobby And I'll still make fun of them, but I still own a bunch. So yeah Yes, uh, so yeah, Joseph's saying you're such an Ameritrasher, Rob uh, I, Yeah, I'm just uh, <laughs> remember I like, you know, it's and I understand it's like where you're raised too, right? But uh, I like theme in my games, right? I grew up the first gaming experiences I had were like my Nintendo Entertainment System when I was like five years old or six years old. And the theme of some of those games, like, you know, being able to play something that had a theme related to a movie or, or something that I liked or a show I liked. And I'm playing like, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, like blew my mind. And, and then to play with like card games and board games that were tied to theme. Even when I was a kid, playing games that had like a theme on it, I understood just pulled me into the game, right? And, and it just relates to something I love. So, again, Game of Thrones, a board game. Love the theme, the IP, Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, Song of Ice and Fire. 
pulled me into the hobby with the card game, the board game at the time. So games that are just like, uh, it's in space and you're building buildings on planets. Woo! Like, come on, man, get out of here. You could put some more effort into that. Uh, but yeah, so it's just like, I, I will always give it to those games that pulled me in. But I understand the whole Euro thing and, and you know, World War Two and how, you know, Germany and the laws they had in place of, you know, not promoting war in their board games back after World War Two had ended. Um, and it just became a cultural thing growing up as like playing board games that had little player interaction, all about just gathering points. They were kind of seem boring and lame. And here I am growing up as a kid in Canada playing, uh, playing Nintendo games and watching movies with Batmans and Robocops in them and they're blowing guys heads off and I'm watching aliens punching Arnold Schwarzenegger in the face and it, you know like this is what I grew up with is the 80s action movies you know the, playing the NES versions of those action movies uh, and playing board games with some of those action movie themes and stuff that's how I was raised so like yeah I think I think it might go to that <laughs> it's like that's just what I need in my games but yeah <laughs> so this is really funny because yeah, yeah. Dan said this before you even started that story. And Dan says, to keep this game spicy, Rob will tell a story from his childhood every 10 minutes. No, no, there's a, no, no. To keep <laughs> and you said you started that story before you both got it. Yep. So uh, the other thing, so gather around, children, gather around. <laughs> no, the other house rule we're going to apply today based on, was recommended in the solo stream yesterday, is every time you need to go to a new planet that you have to spend some terraforming units for, yeah, uh, you have to bust out a game of solo terraforming Mars for, and you have to play it and beat the solo AI uh, to earn one point of terraforming. So if you're trying to get to a planet that needs three terraforming, we're gonna we're gonna clear this away. We're gonna put out terraforming Mars, and that player has to play a solo terraforming Mars full game to beat the AI to earn one point. Then we'll clean that up. We'll play again. And we'll do that over because that seems like a very good use of time. So uh, be prepared. We're about to play for the next 23 hours at least <laughs> uh, based on my estimate, estimation. Okay, so we're canceling tomorrow's stream? Yeah, yeah. Saying? No okay. no stream tomorrow anymore because <laughs> we're going to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to do to keep it spicy is just work in some terraforming Mars playthroughs into this to, uh, you know, to blend them together and uh, create the mega game uh, <laughs> is the idea. So, <laughs> And if you do that at home, you, you heard it here first. <laughs> Unreal Tournament, yes. <laughs> yes, I never really played Unreal Tournament, but Doom and Quake and Wolfenstein and those, before the, the granddaddies to that game. Yeah, yeah, I, those are the ones I was playing. And uh, what's the other one? Hexen or something? I, I play that a lot. Oh, what if we don't win our solo? You, you don't get, you, you got to choose a new action. Oh my God. You, you have to choose a new action. You didn't earn your terraforming. Or, mm. or we can have it so you have to play again and again until, until you, you earn get it. it. Until you earn it. I never played solo, so that would probably be a while. So <laughs> it's torture, yes, it is. Tara's true. thing is torture. Now, is it torture for the viewers who have to sit through that? Is it torture for the other player at the table who has to watch that solo game happen, or is it torture for the person who has to play Terraforming Mars, looking at the horrible art and graphic design for multiple playthroughs in a single day? That's that's I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Woo! All right. Is the stream spicy enough now for you, Dan? <laughs> Uh, Demon says, wait, Canada's still in lockdown? Ontario is, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, where we are. All of Ontario, I think. Yeah, is. Where, where we are in Ontario, they're having, like, still high numbers of COVID cases, hospitals filling up, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, the variants have hit here, and there's a bunch of variants that are, like, spreading really fast. And uh, we're just, like, behind what happened in some other countries are now now happening here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's like a ripple effect, it seems. Yeah, and Kate's right. Canada's going freaking backwards. Lockdown, yeah, we are. I feel like we're. I don't think it's backwards, Kate. I just think it's delayed. It's delayed. It is delayed. It's delayed because other countries had like major lockdowns before we did, and they had high numbers before we did. And it's yeah. like you can see on graphs like how the spikes in other countries like it, it lines up. If you just like shift everything by a couple months, you'll see like everyone kind of had the same thing happen. It's just everyone had it happen at different times. Yeah, um, is, is what I'm I'm getting from it. But who knows? Like, yeah, uh, they could manage things better, of course, but. So that whole balance of economy versus like health and safety, you know, yeah. money has to be made. Supposedly, a few people can die, but money has to be made. Uh, during Euro streams, Rob goes with the jalapeno peach tea variant. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. 
Uh, Matt says, what's with the Euro hating? Some of us love Euro games. Uh, because everyone's entitled to their own opinions. You don't hate them. I don't hate them. I'm going to hate on them. I think you think they're boring to stream, right? Like, Here's, more boring than it, in a competitive... But again, it's where you are and who you play with. So, th my issue with the Euro games is I can't pull people into the hobby with most of them, okay? I yeah, just find I find the players I play with, the people that I, I've I've met, family members, friends, you know, coworkers, none of them I ever could pull in to play. Hey, want to play this dry ass space game with me? Like they're gonna look at me like, get out of here, loser. But if I bring a game down where it's like it relates to games they grew up with, like it 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 kind of relates, like it seems like it's a version of Risk or is related to like you know with Mel, she loved you know if you love The Walking Dead, grab Dead of Winter. Pull that out. Try to relate it to a theme that people understand. Uh, you can pull them right in. Also mechanics that people like, like rolling yep. dice, things like yep. that, yeah. Rolling dice, taking over areas on the board, fighting each other, some card plays, yeah. you know, like all, uh, uh, some math, but like, you know, little downtime. These kind of things. I look at games too from like, how can I expand my play group? At least I used to. How I can expand my play, play group. How I can pull new people into the hobby. That's how I started my channel was trying to show off games that I thought... They may be a little complex, they might be a little weird, they might be lifestyle, but like, I got into them and I was not a board gamer. And you can do it too, is how like I started the channel, was that idea. So this, today I'm still doing the same thing, I'm showing you there's this complex Euro game. I wouldn't recommend it as a game you buy to get in the hobby and go start showing all your friends. You're going to scare them away from the hobby. So I always give credit to games that help me, selfishly, get more players in the hobby, get more players I can play with. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it is puzzles and brain burning. That's yeah, true. It is. That is really what Euro games are. They're, they're closer to puzzles, um, which I love. You guys know, I love that. Like, you know, cloud spire and this stuff has the like puzzly euro -y action management, you know, resource management, all that stuff. But it also has the cool, like you're competing, you're fighting, you're, you know, it, it's got the, th like I can connect it to themes I know. But do you think actually, uh, if Euro games were maybe easier, because there's always so many rules in Euro games and that's a problem, but um, if they were easier, do you think it would actually be easier to get them to the table and bring new people to the hobby? Because you're not fighting there against somebody, you know? There are easier Euro games. Like, there's easier Euro games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no competitiveness really other than just like race for points. Which you think would actually bring but you more have, people? You to... have to understand, like Catan and Ticket to Ride, and those games that have boosted the hobby are basically like yeah, those dry right. kind of Euro games with a little player interaction. Yeah, they have to have some of it, or, they, or you know, they wouldn't be so popular. I think. Yeah. Um, but they are race to points. You know, race to build the biggest track. You know, take over, settle, settle half the board. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the games. I'll give a shout out to those for sure. They help pull people in the hobby. They do. Um, but yeah, I just find like, I, I've never pulled anyone in the hobby with Catan or Ticket to Ride. Like I have those games for that purpose. I bought them, but man, I pull them out and sometimes they're just, I pulled them out of like board game nights we used to host where I have like 20 people over and no one cared to play those games. Like no one, you could tell people were just getting bored at the table, yawning and stuff like, and it was like, man, I'm losing these people. I'm losing these people. <laughs> so I, there's tons of YouTube channels out there. There's channels that live stream board games. If you want to go just watch Euro games, go to those other channels, get the hell out of here. This is Rob's gaming table. <laughs> I will voice my opinion. I will tell you what I like. I will play what I want. So yes, and I will hate on what I want to hate on. And But my mind can be changed. I, I have an open mind to some of this stuff, but I will just let you guys know. From my point of view, where I'm coming from, otherwise I'll just be like every other channel if I just smile and tell you every game is great and you know why why they're all good. But you know, I, I'm, it's part of like my journey. You're watching me and Mel experience new things, try new things, show off different games. But I'll tell you, my viewer count on any euro -y type game that has no theme to it, uh, the amount of viewers and watch time I have on those videos is low as F. Uh, because, yeah, that's just not my audience too, right? So my audience has similar taste to me in most cases. So I'll be honest, and hopefully I can convert some of them to show you some of these dry, themeless games uh, are still pretty awesome. And you can tell some of these Ameritrash theme games are inspired by some of these Euro games and take some of those mechanics. And, you know, you got to show credit where credit's due. So, uh, but yeah, like even Gloomhaven, love Gloomhaven, but it, it was always touted as like, whoa, Isaac took a bunch of Euro mechanics and tied it into a dungeon crawler and it blew people's minds. It brought both worlds together and it's number one on Board Game Geek of all time. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say like Euro games don't need to exist because like all the games we play nowadays wouldn't exist. The modern hobby wouldn't exist without these Euro games. Like Catan and Ticket to Ride and um, Puerto Rico and stuff like that, right? So, uh, but yeah, I'll still make fun of them because that's what I do. 
Um, but you guys know I wouldn't be playing it if I didn't like it. So I think I like them more than you do. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's because there's no fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dan says, and scheduled for Tuesday, Castle of the Burgundy live stream, Rob Gaming Table, Euro Channel subsidiary. Yeah, yeah, my, my <laughs> other channel, my other channel, right? I hide all the Euro games on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you guys won't watch them on this channel? I'll just make another channel and we'll go hang out over there too. I'll just wear like glasses and change my name like Bob's Gaming Table. <laughs> Where we play Euro games. <laughs> yeah. <That's> funny. <laughs> it was almost a rub, don't you tell me moment. <laughs> and Matt says we can agree to disagree, also get bent. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. I always, yeah. always love the, the back and forth with Matt. It's awesome. It's <laughs> uh, funny. And Matt's group loves Euros. Matt's group loves Euros. Matt, what are, what is your group's... Uh, top three most played games over like the last couple of years or three years or whatever. Uh, the one that the ones that hit the table the most. I'm curious. I want to know what your group plays. What some of the best euros you guys feel for a multiplayer or group setting, even solo too. I guess I, I'm very curious because like I, I look at BGG and certain ones are at the top, but then I, I go look at them and I'm like, man, really? Like why these ones? But I'm slowly playing some of these top 100 BGG games and realizing like I see like people get hooked on these. They're very deep. Uh, if you want to get into it and try to solve them and well, yeah, it's like a puzzle, right? You have to play yeah. over and over yeah. and yeah. And yeah. if it's hitting your table a lot, you're tending to go, all right, I'm gonna give this a higher rating. Yeah. Because I want to put it on the table more often. That makes a good board game. Yeah. And yes, please hit the like button for sure. <laughs> hit the like button. We've gone like 35 minutes already, and uh, I haven't even explained anything about the game. So this is, this is pretty good. <laughs> and I'm not going to explain much about the game. We're just going to play it. Uh, Tara, it depends. So Tara asks, what mm. games have you found are best at introducing games to other people who aren't in the hobby? You have to know those other people and what they like. So if I get to know a coworker in the past, I find out what movies they're into, what shows they're into, what books they read, what comics they like, you know, what they're browsing on the website, what they want to learn, you know, what video games they play, whatever. And I try to find a theme that matches, or if I think, you know, maybe they're not a hardcore gamer. Maybe the video games they play are super light. Maybe they only watch, like, you know, light action movies. They're not really into reading deep story and books and stuff, you know. You know, if they don't read and that kind of thing, maybe I need a game that has a, a smaller rule book, lighter rule set, you know. Because um, I'm kind of the same. Like, it's hard for me to read. Like, I don't, I don't read a lot, and my reading comprehension has never been great, even from a kid. And I've tried to work on it over the years, but... Uh, yeah, I don't want to lose people throwing tons of rules at them or telling them to read a rule book, you know, or a long how to play video they can't pay attention to. So I go try to tie theme. So if I can find a good game that's at the right complexity level that has a certain theme, it's very personalized and, and it's something I, I take pride in doing. And it's how I found over the last 10 years is the best way to get people into it. So if somebody doesn't care about trains, do not buy a ticket to ride and try to get them into the hobby with freaking ticket to ride. No one cares. And some people haven't ridden a train in their life. Some people will never ride trains in their life anymore. Uh, it's just the way things are. So, like, maybe the Ticket to Ride theme, even though, like, you know, it's, it is the theme to it. But these are what you got to do. Like, settlers, if they're not into, like, history, like, settlers of Catan and settling continents and stuff, like, if they don't care about that, whatever, you know, like, don't bother with that. But um, if the game can be learned at a certain complexity, I find that's at least my way I figured it out, is, is even if the game has a great mechanics, a great hook, you know, good rules good art it, it might not be enough like it, it's it might have to have a cheesy theme on it or something to just be able to make them understand the mechanics to the theme so if you can explain like why are you putting cubes there or moving this many spaces you know you explain it's because you know if you are in this car now and you understand cars and movement speed and you know range and you're into guns or you like playing call of duty i'm going to play a game with you that involves guns and shooting maybe and you'll understand line of sight and range and that kind of stuff and you can you know, even though that stuff's usually more complex games, if you can tie it to something someone understands in real life, uh, you can get them into it. So there's no answer to that. I can't give you a game that's the best to get people in the hobby. It depends on those people. It really depends on those people. Um, and sometimes the most basic game that you can, you know, a, a game of, you know, 30 cards in a box, a love letter or whatever, you know, you can teach that game in two seconds to start playing it. I pulled a lot of people into the hobby through Love Letter, to be honest, or Star Realms or Hero Realms. Mm -hmm. Those games are super quick, and depending on the theme, if you know someone's into Star Trek or Star Wars, they know that. 
I can bring out Star Realms and explain space stations and stuff to them or spaceships and planets and factions and things and deck building super quick and boom, we're playing. And a lot of people played Magic the Gathering when they were kids like my age, right? They played Pokemon the card game or Yu-Gi-Oh the card game. So when you play a game like Star Realms or Hero Realms, uh, they understand the idea of playing cards and evaluating cards and building decks on the fly is not really a hard concept, right? So I would use that with some of my coworkers uh, at my last job. I, I, I would teach people that barely spoke English. I was teaching them some games. Uh, guys that we used to work with uh, from Mexico and stuff. I have a whole table uh, of guys from Mexico barely spoke English. And I, I have them playing... Uh, I had them playing uh, Ethnos, Hero Realms, Star Realms at different lunch breaks and stuff. And, and learning these games. And they were getting into it. And then they were finding games in their language. And teaching their family and their friends. And it was just spreading off from that. So um, it depends. It really depends. But... Uh, yeah, King King, King, of New York, King King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo, King of Tokyo. yeah. King of Tokyo is a that. very good one. It's a very good game yeah. for teaching players. Uh, people understand, especially now with all those Godzilla movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people watch this Godzilla versus King Kong and these movies. They've gone gained in popularity in like North America, I guess worldwide probably. Um, so grabbing a game now like King of Tokyo, I still would recommend King of Tokyo over King of New York. I play both, but I found King of Tokyo is better to pull people in the hobby with. More mm -hmm. straightforward. Yeah, we've definitely more used straightforward. That game. Um, but that game you can easily be like, yeah, you want to play, like, the art's cool, the gameplay is simple, and you can battle each other, it doesn't take too long, the rules are easy. Uh, King of Tokyo has been a, one that's pulled a lot of players we know into the hobby over the years. Uh, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. I see people mention that one in the chat, that's a great one. Yeah. And that one has lots of player interaction. You're messing with each other, yeah. you're trying to grab cards, yeah. you're, you know, fighting each other, pushing your luck. Yeah, rolling dice. Table talk, yeah. you know. So yeah, we I go on all day about different uh, games like that. That's a, that's a separate... You know, bring this up in the Q and A next time, and I can I can talk all about this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, do a little research. Find out what find out what the person you're trying to teach the game, or people, your kids, you, you know, your your fam, people in your house right now, even during COVID. Find out what they're into. Like you know, like you know what books you you know maybe your wife or your husband's reading, or what movies they like, or shows they like, or video games they play, or what your kids into. You know what they're playing online or whatever. If there's a board game that has that theme most likely, and a good rule set to get them into the hobby. So um yeah so oh yeah and then um tara's also saying i found my group much preferred co-ops versus competitive yep. so they narrowed it down that way and yep. that's a huge thing yep. too yeah you don't want to start yep. off with some big competitive game but you gotta understand some, pe <laughs> some people doesn't like that some people played monopoly and risk growing up and that's the only games they played were, which are very competitive so when yeah. they come into tabletop gaming you show them newer competitive games that work but some people have played nothing and, and a co-op is better to teach someone because you're working with them so you might not turn them off by fighting them and trying to destroy them in a True. game, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it just depends. It's so specific. It, it's hard. There's no one game for everything, but uh, but yeah. Uh, All right. Got some good discussion. This is yeah. crazy. I love it. I love it. This is awesome. Man, very passionate about this stuff. But yeah, I miss teaching games to people in person, trying to pull people in. Um, but I guess through YouTube, we can still do it too. You taught so. me this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I taught you this one, yeah. <laughs> Teach my daughter games sometimes and stuff, but... Usually I could, uh, read the rules and whatever, but this one he taught me. Yeah, Sakabra's told me this before too. Yeah, I see Sakabra saying, uh, the wife hates PvP games. Yep. Oh, okay. And that's fine. Yeah. You just ignore those games. You have tons of co-ops out there, some great co-op games, some solo games you can play side by side together, mm -hmm. you know, work together on. Um, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Like, you could even get a game like this. This is PvP, right? But you could play solo with your wife, working with one faction together, trying to solve, you know, the, solve the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And trying to beat the AI and stuff. Like, that, that I hear some people do that a lot, is get solo games and play those together because it's just like playing a co-op. Um, even if it's a multiplayer, you know, worker placement game, there's usually a solo variant that you can sit together on the same side of the table and play it co-op style. I, we don't really do that, no. but it's possible. Even those solo-only games, you can play together with someone else and let them make the decisions and that helps pull them into the hobby teach them the game and then you know you can work them into other games that way too that's another way to do it because um, the solo games you usually can learn on your own too feel comfortable with before you teach them so that's also a, a pro tip there uh dan wants me to describe all detail in detail, all 14 friggin' factions. <laughs> uh, frig you, Dan. Frig you. Uh, no. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't even know. I don't know more than like four of them. So uh, I'm not going to go into that. But there's a PDF online of this game. If you're curious what is different about each faction, uh, there is a PDF of the rules, uh, which I also open, I think. But um, at the back, in the appendix, 
If you want to learn what each faction does uniquely and their special powers, all 14 of them are here. And you just have to flip the board and you'll see the other side of the same color. And uh, yeah, you can see what's there. Uh, Co-op. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, okay. Bob's joking. <laughs> He's like, what's this co-op word? <laughs> the best thing in life is to crush your enemies. See them driven, uh, driven before you and hear uh, lamentations of the... What? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh, man. Play what we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get into this game. I think it's about time. I think it's about time. We've probably lost all the people that, uh, you know. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> all... People watching there on YouTube are like, what the hell? I'm 45 minutes in this guy hasn't started playing the game. So, yeah, but it's not welcome. Welcome around yeah. the gaming table. <laughs> yep. Okay, so out. randomly we're going to find out who's first player. I think that's what happens first, but you. Uh, I rolled a six. Was me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were doing the odd even. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or we could just roll, but I got a six Three. and it's even, it's, so it's sure. It's you, yeah. All right, okay. so I'll take first player. Okay. We got a little first player token here. Uh, let's start setting up some board stuff, I think. We already got our factions, obviously. Um, there's six of these, so I think we can roll. Oh, no Where'd that go? I got it. Uh, here, I'll just shuffle them and you roll. Four. So number four is this one. Roll it again. Four. Uh, and number four is this one. <laughs> so okay. here's here's our two end game goals. Oh. So we got you get for every different planet type you've built on, you'll get a point. So there's ten planets total, but one of those is purple. You can't build on it. So technically, there's nine total planets types, including the lost planet token, which is up here. So if you can get that, that's an additional planet type, which I learned yesterday. Uh, thank you, everybody, for that. Or the rule book, I guess. Uh, and the bottom one here, I played with yesterday. Oh, it's every different, like, sector that you're uh, on? Let's roll again. I, I want to see different ones that sure. we played with yesterday. Five. Uh, there's no five. But uh, oh. here, let me just... Um, I'll do it again. There, Two. I'm going to eliminate the other one I had yesterday. Two. Two? Okay, so this one. Uh, the most buildings. I think you just count your buildings with this one. Oh, okay. So That's the sad. more buildings you slap and play... And, uh, where was that other one? The more buildings and the more planets types you can spread out on, that's what we're trying to do today. That's what's going to get you the, a load of end game points, possibly. First place in those gets 18 for each one. Second place gets 12. Third place, there's a neutral player. So there is three point spots. If you tie with even the neutral player or Melari tie, uh, we will divide the points of the two spots, and you each get half. Okay. So neutral starts on 5 and 11. Yeah. So that's what those orange cubes are. Uh, they are the neutral player uh, to take up that third scoring position. So right now, the neutral player is in first. So all of their, we're only could get 12 or 6 points, depending on if we're second or third. But if you can pass that, then there's a chance you can get up to 18 points. Uh, these ones... So we'll do our booster tiles, I guess. If you yeah. want, you can just shuffle those ones oh, up yeah, and just yeah. lay them down yeah. without looking at the How other many side. are there? Uh, ten, but oh, we only okay. need six. Yep. So we'll just shuffle them and start laying them down and however you want to do it. And our boosters are going to be the top five I just done shuffling. I think that's five. Yep. So our boosters, round boosters, we have randomly in the game. Out of ten of them, you get five. Uh, for a two-player game, I believe. It's players plus three, I think. Uh, so we got uh, the one that can get you a QIC cube and a gold during the income phase. We got one that can help you charge two power during income and a one-time per round ability of getting plus three range. Wow. Uh, we have an end of round goal. Of it, you When you turn this in at the end of the round, you get one point for every green planet you're on and it can give you four income at the start of your turn or at the start of the round. Uh, this one, when you turn it back in, uh, at the end of a round, you can get two points for every trading post you have in play, and you can earn one ore in the income phase. And we have another income phase ore and gaining two purple power tokens to level one of your little power cycle wheel area here. Um, so we can do it like this, I think. Okay. Uh, if you want to flip over our round bonuses oh, yeah, and yeah. explain to us what they are. So first one is when you gain a Federation tile. 
So when you create a federation on the board by networking a bunch of your or planets together, you can gain a federation token. Yep. Okay. When you move up on the research track, you will gain two points. So any of these tracks you move up, doesn't matter. But every time during round two that you move up, you get two additional points. Okay. Every time you build a mine, you will gain four. During, during round, round three round only. Three. Yep, yep. Round four is when you upgrade um, these two. <laughs> This one in, oh, these ones, sorry, sorry, those ones. You will gain five, I don't know what they're called. Oh, we got the mine again. You will gain two points in round five. And in round six, when you build a way, I've never seen this one before. So when you... Every unit of terraforming you spend on that round. So if you go to a planet oh. that needs three terraforming units away, no matter how you got the terraforming, whether it's from this special action or on like one of these tiles or something yeah or you just pay for it with ore or you know whatever it costs you any of those you do on that turn uh you get a uh, two, two points, points for each oh, unit interesting so even if you just go to one planet that you're like needs three that you're automatically getting six points for that wow okay which is good because you want to expand in this one get off different planet types yeah so if you work your way up to end of last round of the game and you're getting on some different planet types that you've been having trouble all game working up to you'll get some score some points as you get to those planets so Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So see how the random setup every game uh, can change just your round bonuses, your end game goals, the boosters that are getting you help each round. And now we have a random setup on here. Uh, actually, if you want to roll a D6, we can find out which uh, Federation token is going to go at the top of this track. Uh, one, two, also, three, this one, four. like, we're not likely to get this. Like, I don't know that you can get a Federation token that yeah, fast, Yeah, so you just right? ignore it. That's crazy. But you can. I'm sure there's a way or else that, like, that showing up. There's got to be a faction that's maybe good at doing maybe. that. Maybe. We know there's <laughs> that one faction. Oh, this faction that does it with six oh, value. Oh, so maybe you could. Ma maybe. Like, that's a lot. I, I don't know. But either way, if it's hard for us, we just don't get the bonus. That's yeah. great. You just yeah. don't worry about it. Um, and then start planning for ones in the future. Yeah. Uh, so this token, the one that could give you uh, six points and two knowledge, is going to randomly be up here at the top of this track. So whoever's the first one to get up there, uh, they get that as a bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm going to set up these uh, advanced tiles. Just do a little shuffly shuffle, I guess. Um, and they're they're going to be random every game, and you don't see all of them. And they're one-time grab. You do not re refill these spots. So we have, when you take this advanced tech tile uh, for every trading station you have in play, at the time you take this tile, you get four points for it. So obviously you want to set that up. Uh, this one, um, hmm, it seems like when you trade in your round booster, so having this is an ongoing ability, I think, and anytime you trade in your round booster, you'll get three points for every federation token you have. Yeah, that's I what I see. I would assume. I think I even saw that as an example. Yeah, you can, they're, no, they're all in here. Yeah, when you take a pass action, gain three victory points per federation token. Yeah, okay, that. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one, if you take it, it's ongoing, and it, it fires every time you move up a track, you get two points. So if you're going to go up research tracks, get this quick, and every time you do it, you'll get two extra points. Uh, this one is a one-time action per round. You can put a little token on here to cover it up, and you'll get a QIC and five gold. Wow. That's a good one. And this one is ongoing. Every time you place a mine on the board, no matter where it is, you get three victory points. And this one is when you take this one and gain it, it's a one-time shot of two points for every mine you have in play. Now, to take these, there is restrictions. They're not easy to grab. You have to have your token on the track at four or five to be able to grab this. You have to have earned a tactile somehow, and instead of grabbing one of the tactiles I'm going to put on the bottom, you can choose to grab that. But to grab it, you have to have a federation token that's on the green side that you can flip. You also have to have a regular tactile that you can put it on to replace the ability. So getting these is like rare, I'm assuming, and hard to do uh, to work your way up. And it's hard to do quickly, I would assume. Yesterday, I got a couple of them. You got I, a couple of those? Yeah, but it was like last round of the game, I feel. Mm. Like it took forever. But they were ones that like scored points when I grabbed them. So it kind of made sense. Yeah, yeah. I built myself up to it, grabbed them at a certain time, get an extra shot of points. Yep. But look, there's so many that you do not put in the game. So every time you play, you're going to have different tiles there too. Uh, then they have these standard tech tiles. We're going to shuffle them up. You play with all of these in a game. You'll see all these no matter what you play, uh, what, how, how many times you play, you'll see them. They will just be in different positions tied to different tracks. 
Uh, so this one, you seven victory points. When you take this tech tile, you'll go up one on this track. This one, generate your four gold in the income phase every round, and you'll go up on this track, and you if you take that tile, this one gets you one gold and one knowledge in the income phase. This one makes your uh, academies and your planetary institutes uh, worth four power in the game instead of uh, three, which is good for generating power and building federations. Uh, this one, every time you put a mine on a green planet, you score three victory points. So similar to this one, except for it's green planets only. Uh, this one will gain you a one-time shot of an ore and a QIC cube. Uh, this one gets you uh, charge for power one time on your turn. And this one uh, gives you one ore in your income phase and lets you charge one power. And the last one, when you take it, it's a one-time shot of one knowledge for every different planet type you have a you have on your control, I guess, or you've colonized. And then we're just going to take one copy of each of the others because each player is allowed to grab each one once. You're never allowed to have a duplicate. Uh, so I'll just put two copies of each one out here to show that that's what we can grab. But if you're playing with more players, they have four copies, I think, of each of these in the game box. Um, that you can put here, but you're only allowed to grab one of each type. You can't have duplicates. Okay. Everything random that's been set up, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay. Yep. So, income phase. Sorry, so I get one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we didn't set up completely because we need to put our buildings and out. Then... And there is a... We're going to just go with the basic setup that's recommended for your first multiplayer game. Uh, which is somewhere in this book. Uh, so for two players, it's showing... We're playing with the two factions they recommend to play with the multiplayer as you learn the game or whatever. So they're more simplified factions, I would assume. They're also... A, we're doing the board setup based on... That's in the book recommended for a balanced ish two-player game i guess it's balanced i don't know um i would assume so and my faction's ability i can put out three mines to start on setup you put out two so we'll just copy where those are which i just think it's the three that are in the middle here yeah just not this far one so i'm playing the yellow faction obviously mel's playing the red faction uh well the yellow on this side of the board it's the xenos but on the other side of the board is a totally different yellow faction uh, so that's that. And... Oh, we get to choose our first round booster, starting with the last player. So, Mel, you get to choose your first oh. round booster. Also, if you have any ability yep. in your setup that lets you go up on a track. So, Mel's faction gets to go up one I'm, on... I'm red. Uh, one on the income track. And I get to go up one on the QIC track. So, I get a second QIC... And you get, in the income phase, you'll get some extra gold, which Mel's faction is all about the gold. Mm -hmm. I think my faction is all about the QIC cubes, I, I think. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, anyways. <laughs> That's what I think, based on where they're kind of going up on the track, but I could be wrong. Um, okay. There's two that I'm interested in here, but I think I'll go with this one. Which will let me gain two power and a um, an ore. Hmm. Hmm. I never know which one of these to take <laughs> ever. Well, it's hard to right no away because I don't really know what I'm doing yet. But I know no and idea. I haven't calculated how many resources I'm gonna have. I, I don't know. Maybe this one. That was the one I was debating between these two. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I like the four gold on the other one. I want some ore. I probably would have taken that one you just took, but I don't know. I guess this one. I, I, again, I don't know the game well enough to know like what's good with what faction stuff and which one's obvious. I'm sure some of you who know this game very well, played it hundreds of times, are going, you idiots. But hey, it's all good. We're having That's fun okay. today. Um, all right. Uh, I think we're good for the income phase. I'm pretty sure. I don't think we missed anything for setup other other than that. No, I think that's good. I'm trying to go by memory here, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so simultaneously, we just do our income. 
Do you so, want to do it one at a time or no? Whatever. So I get one, two, three, or uh, one knowledge. No gold here. I get nothing on this track. I do get gold here though. Uh, one, two, and another QIC cube. Yay! Okay. I get three ore here. One, two, three. I get three gold here. I get one knowledge here. Uh, on here, I get one more ore. I get two power, which is going to go into my bucket one. I also on here get uh, to charge a power and two gold. So I'll take the two gold first, and then I get to charge one power, which has to go from one to two. Uh, and I think that is all. Okay, so uh, I, I did forget to explain our faction specifically. I figured it would come out as we played. Uh, and then we explained our setup and stuff, but I see you, Franchello is asking, can you explain the two you're playing, please? Yes. Uh, let's explain. So the only difference in most of the time with the faction is their s ability. They might have an ongoing ability up here and special setup instructions that are in this section of the board. And they have a unique faction ability that gets unlocked once they build their pan planetary institute. So if Mel, you lift up your planetary institute, you can see that Mel's uh, could generate uh, or charge for power, gain one power token. She also has an ability she can now have other free actions of spending gold. Her faction is very focused on gold and spending gold to do things because she has all those cool free actions, assuming she unlocks that part. If she never builds a planetary institute, she's missing out on like basically 50% of what's unique to her faction. Um, so gold, 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 flexibility is what her faction does, is my understanding. Uh, the board's usually set up the same with the flow of upgrades and how power works. But she may have some different starting values. You may have some more power, some more gold, some more knowledge, whatever. Some of them have different starting values of, of resources. But we're playing really basic factions that are recommended for your first playthrough of two-player. So I'm pretty sure they're very similar uh, and not that complex. Their abilities are pretty straightforward. My ability, like you saw, I get to set up an extra mine to start. I get an extra QIC because I go up on this green track. Mel goes up one on the income track. So she's going to start getting more gold in the income phase. But she also has this ability eventually she unlocks that, get, that uses gold to get more resources. Uh, my ability here, I can charge four power, same as her. But I could be gaining a QIC every round in the income phase. And my ability here, if I unlock it, is I can build a federation with six power of buildings minimum instead of seven. Um, so yeah. And I think that is all that's different with the factions. But if you look at the PDF online and you're curious about the different factions in the game... Again, they're all at the back here. So as you see, the, the one Mel is playing the Hadash Halas, they have no special ability and they just have a straightforward planetary institute ability I just talked about. But as you see, if you flip the red board and want to play the other faction, now you have to read oh, a wow. four page novel to understand how your faction special. So I think in this game, they hide the more complex factions on the other side of the same color. And the same here, if you look at the yellow I'm playing, has a pretty like straight ability, pretty, pretty straight, uh, planetary institute ability but then if you flip over the yellow they get like a special token and they have a little more to them right so that's how the game works but the other factions they seem to all have like kind of a basic side and that does something unique and then a more complex side in most cases hmm. um, they all have different names they, they, are, they, all, they all have different home planet types that's the other thing so uh, what else what else is unique to the factions I, I always forget but I know when I'm playing is uh, the yellow faction can go on yellow planets without terraforming them. They're like their home planet. And then other planet types will cost different levels of terraforming that are different. And you can see it, uh, you know, displayed here very nicely. So I'm yellow. So I can easily for one terraforming get to brown or orange. Two terraforming it takes to get to a black planet or a red planet to make it habitable. And to get on a blue or white is very rare for me because it costs three terraforming to get to those planets because they're... Their atmosphere, they're further, you know, all different from my environments that my race or, or you know, aliens or whatever live in. Um, so the red, you know, she's red is her homeland. So orange and blue are easier for her. So orange planets might be something that we kind of butt heads on maybe a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, so you, you're not really going to be able to steal my yellow planets that easily. Uh, but brown and black might be open where you're not even touching them. So maybe I go that direction kind of idea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, resource-wise. You can get to any planet type you want. It's just more expensive to do so. Um, so yeah. I'm also thinking that we probably should adjust this track based on what we just did. So we both would have one planet right Oh yeah, now, we're right? supposed to do that, yeah. And then you would have three. <laughs> I always I forget about those boards. Two. 
Yeah, they have little tracks. You can keep track of the end game goals as you play, but I forget those sometimes. We will double check it at the end. Just Obviously, at the end of the game, you're going <laughs> to check. But uh, the other thing was they were mentioning yesterday, there is a kind of hack that uh, some players were telling me in the solo stream to start doing. They told me at the end of the stream, wish I started from the beginning, uh, but is putting your a little satellite cube on oh, each on planet you, you have? Because it's an end game goal. Um, oh, just so and, you can and, see, and it right? And it helps if you take one of these powers, you can just quickly know. So every time you take a planet type, just double check that you've already put your cube on that type. If not, put a cube out. So we know I'm on yellow. So I can quickly look over and go, I have one planet type under my control. If I take control of a green planet, I would put a cube on there to know now I have that planet type oh, okay. in my thing. There's also the lost planet is here. I didn't notice when oh, I was I didn't notice playing that. before either. Well, do you want to leave that there? Uh, yes, I do. Um, good <laughs> idea. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah. Joseph in the chat I, I, I was mentioning before the stream started, Tara was saying her name was on the box. And thanks again for the super chat. Uh, but I grabbed the box as uh, Board Games Near Moss is in the chat saying, oh, his name's on the box too. And I didn't know if he was joking, so I had to double check. <laughs> uh, but on the side of the box, uh, when you take off the lid, there's the play testers. Oh, they put it in. Are the around box. the outside of the box here. Interesting. In alphabetical order. But if I look for Joseph, I can't even see the screen now. If I look for Joseph, I, I now know he's not lying because his name really is on the box. So if anyone wants to know what board games with Near Moss's name is, it's right there. <laughs> so, and his phone number, I think, is on here somewhere too. And his email address, let me see if I can find it. No, I'm just joking. Uh, his credit card number, he's right here. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but yeah, so Joseph's in the chat. So anything I don't like about the game, I am definitely going to blame on Joseph in the chat. A anything in the rules, uh, what an icon looks like. Even though he's just a playtester, I'm going to blame him for any kind of art complaints. Uh, gameplay mechanic complaints, anything like that. Uh, send all your angry comments to to board games near Moss in the chat. That's that's my recommendation. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I looked down, I saw I had the board box there. I'm like, why did I put that? Oh yeah, I remember why I put that there. I just forgot. Okay, uh, so income we did mm -hmm. Gaia phase. Uh, nothing's happening because nobody put a terraformer on the board to t t uh, Gaia form or whatever it's called a purple transient planet into a green planet. So we'll skip that for now, but in future rounds, I'm sure that will come into play. Maybe not. You don't have to do it. Um, but yeah, you can. Uh, so we skip that. Now we go right to the actions, which is uh, you know the main phase of the game, and we just keep going back and forth doing actions until we both pass. Once you pass, you're out of the round. You kind of wait until you're done. You'll throw your booster back. You'll grab a new one. You can never have the same round booster two rounds in a row, so you have to grab a new one uh, and put that one back. So if you pass early, other players can grab your booster, um, but if you pass first, you'll take the first player token and you get to go first next round. So there's a strategy anyone knows in kind of Euro games uh, and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, sometimes you want to take first player so you can grab that. You can grab that special action you want to grab or that planet on the board you want to grab or something before the other player. So, And you can pass whenever. You can still have tons of resources and things you could do. You could just decide to pass because you're saving up stuff to do a whole bunch of cool actions in the next round based on a round bonus. So even though you might have a ton of knowledge to go up a bunch of tracks, you might wait till the next round to do that to gain those round bonuses depending on the on the round. Uh, <laughs> oh, Joseph's on Team Rob. All right, awesome. Yeah. I have one fan in the chat. Woo! <laughs> we have a couple in there. <laughs> I know. Most of them stay quiet though. They don't want to get beat up by the by the large gang of Mel fans. So they they stay quiet in the chat. But I know you guys are there. I got you. I got you. That's okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm first, so I get mm -hmm. first action. Mm -hmm. uh, I never know where to really start with this game. So I kind of look at the end game goals. I want to get a bunch of buildings on the board. I want to get on a bunch of different planets. So I got to worry about terraforming in the future. I do have some power to go up knowledge. I want to look at these powers. I do have a QIC. I might be able to use some of these. None of them are helpful for you right now. <laughs> yeah. Scoring a bunch of points. Not, not good. Firing off Federation token. Don't even have one. Gaining a tech tile though. Yeah. That is something interesting. How do we get another cube? Oh, did I? Yeah, I got that one, right? Yeah. So I have three. Hmm. I get another cube by going up the cube track. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe we could try that. I could try that. I have no power charge to do any of these abilities. Could I go up here, get some income going for charging later? Should I try to Gaia form some stuff? I'm just debating going up a track, but also just building buildings on planets would also be probably pretty good. I do have some gold in order to do that. Let's see if some planets 
might be path of least resistance here. We have a brown plane and adjacent. That is only one terraforming step. Um, there is yellow planet over here that's free is so far away. Uh, is there an orange planet nearby? Nothing adjacent. I could try to terraform this one maybe. But I'd have to throw all my power over there and I feel like it could charge up if you're building near me. Uh, maybe I'll just upgrade. Let me upgrade. Uh, so I'm going to spend, um, let's see, who's neighboring? I only have one that's neighboring to you. So I am going to upgrade that one. I will spend one, two, three gold because of discount because you're in the area within two hexes. So I'll upgrade this one. And because I put it in a neighboring area, I just upgraded a building. You can passively power gain yep. uh, one power for zero victory points. Which I will do. And I'll put this back. And that is my action. Yeah. So you have a, a list of free actions on the right side of your board here that you can do before or after your action to kind of help you out. Turn power into resources or spend resources for other resources to make certain actions happen on your turn. But in this game, you only have eight actions and one of them is pass. To do on your turn, you're only allowed one main action a turn. Then you pass over to the other player. So it's pretty quick back and forth. But obviously, I'm going to talk out at the beginning some of this, you know, the strategy I'm thinking so you guys can follow along and understand the richness of the decision making in this game. So pass over to Mel for her first turn here. Okay. I am also going to do something very similar. I'm going to upgrade this planet here. Putting that back. Spending three because you were beside me gold and two. And now you can upgrade if you would like here. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, charge two power and lose one victory point. So now Mel is officially winning <laughs> uh, with 10 victory points to nine. So Mel is in the lead for anyone who needs to keep in track. <laughs> okay. I'm going backwards on the track. This is what you do in this game. At least what I do. <laughs> Didn't tell you. Uh, all right. Uh, now what? Now what? I can get this out. Yeah, let's do this. Um, Taking my strategy here. <laughs> I, well, yesterday, I know. yesterday the faction That's I had there. Is to do see, that here's now. the thing though. I, I don't think this ability is that great early because it's about making federations easier. I'm not building any right now, yeah. but but in the income phase, I can charge some power and get a QIC. Yeah. Uh, I think getting some more income is helpful. The only problem is I lose out on gold income by upgrading. So I need to maybe put one of these out after, but I'm going to do it um, and spend six gold going from 14 to eight and four uh, or going down to three to put up my, my IMAX theater here. Uh, I'm going to upgrade my indoor golf course to an IMAX theater uh, and put that on the board. So that unlocks my faction ability. I've now built within your neighborhood so you can... Uh, gain two power for one victory point if you'd like. Yes, please. If you will do that, I will move two power up here. For one. one. Yep. Okay. And you're go. Well, I'm doing the same thing, not because I'm copying, but I really want to get this unlocked like as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, so that makes sense. That makes sense. That was also my plan here. So I am spending, putting this back, I'm spending six gold. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope. Uh, six. And no, I should be at 12 because I was at two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And four. Four to or. Two. Okay. Okay, I'll passively power gain. I'll, yep. I'll charge three power now because my uh, IMAX theater here is worth three power according to my board. Yep. Uh, so I'll lose two victory points uh, to charge that three power. Go ahead. All right. I am going to. Mm. Mm. Do you have enough for this? Yeah. Um, let me. I'm going to spend three power to take this. Uh, one time action of getting a terraforming. Um, and I could go to an orange or brown planet. My range is only one. So I do have this brown planet adjacent. I could spend a QIC to get some extra range. 
Uh, thinking. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just do the adjacent one, I think. Uh, and I'll spend one ore and two gold to put a mine on this brown planet here. And it's not in the neighborhood of you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I... I think I want to do that, which is different than what I did the first time. So... I think I think I'll spend four knowledge going to zero to move up on the track. And I think I'd like to move up on the purple track to get my transformer. So you've unlocked a Gaia former. Gaia former. And you've now unlocked the action of Gaia forming purple planets and the green planets. Mm -hmm. And which at the cost of putting six power into your Gaia forming area. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Um, I am going to mm. not upgrade. I think can I? Yeah, I have two and six. Probably not good. Maybe I can just get another planet going. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I just have to scan all the like the planets on the board, trying to figure out like what's what range. I have QIC I could add to my range. What is my my terraforming value to get on some of those planets? Just trying to run through that in my head here to figure out, like, you know, and then am I in her neighborhoods where she's getting power, but then I'll be in her neighborhood where I'll get power if you upgrade. It's like all this, like, when to do what, the timing on things. Man, it's a lot of strategy. Um, but I think... I think I am, I think it's some gold generation. So I am going to do two ore and six gold uh, to upgrade. And I'm going to upgrade. Uh, let's upgrade this one. It's not in the neighborhood. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Grand here says, visually, I can't unsee elements of a casino game. Oh, yeah, yeah. See top left of gaming area. Yeah, this right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have to adjust this for you in a minute, but we could do it at the end of the round if that's easier. Oh, whatever, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do an action here where I'm going to spend three gold. One, two, three for an ore. And then I'm going to do that again. One, two, three. For an ore. And then you're doing free actions. Free actions, your, yeah. These are free actions. Area. Then I will build a mine here. I first have to spend uh three ore because it's an orange planet. One, two, three. That makes it habitable. Then I need to spend two gold. And one ore going down to zero to be able to put that there. And that's not within range of two. Oh, yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't upgrade it anyways. Okay. Oh, but building a new one. Does oh, it building too. a new one, yeah. Okay. Okay. Could go up on a track, but I could wait till next round and it would give me two extra bonus points. But if I went up on an income track, that would give me some income next round. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that now. I just don't know. I think I'm going to go up a track 
and I'm going to do it on the um, yeah I'm going to do it on the range one and get a QIC go to four go ahead okay I'm going to for free I'm going to spend oh actually how much I'm going to get two Okay, yeah, I'm going to spend four gold to gain a knowledge for free. And then I will pass. Oh, and I will take this one. Okay, and you now will be the first player next round. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, I'm going to spend four QIC on this action here which is going to allow me to grab a tectile and i think hmm, debating this one to get some gold income that i may not have much of next round or i'm debating this one because it's fun yesterday to charge with power a lot seemed like a cool one to do so I probably should just take that because then I can maybe do some of these instead of just getting four gold straight. I could maybe charge for power that might allow me to get seven. So I'm going to take this one and this one's flexible and allows me to upgrade uh, one level in any column I want versus if I took that one and I'm eyeballing, I would be forced to go up in the range. I could still go up in the range if I want. Um, but I think... And again, I probably should have saved this all for next round where I could have got an extra four bonus points from going up twice on tracks. But I'm thinking of investing in my economy. Um, and I'm debating going up one on the economy track. Yeah, I should have done something slightly different as well. For those people that are saying efficiency, I should have went up on that track instead and then took this track next. The one right okay, we, we can change that. We can change that. Oh, is that okay? Yeah, then put yeah. that one back to zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then put, put your the guy red one up, back, back, put this one back. Put your power back. Oh, you didn't even I, do that. No, because I didn't do it yet. I'm doing it. I want to do it next turn. Oh, so it would have okay. been harder to do that and then go up on that track next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's my Yeah. Mission. We can, we yeah. can fix that. Thank you. Yeah. I find with this game, uh, again, the more plays, you'll realize things early. But this game, a lot of the times, I'm still having it happen where I do an action, then I went, and then a couple actions later, I realized, oh, I should have done this one yeah. first, then this order, and then this. And like you start to just, the more plays you do, the more you realize yeah. there's certain order to things depending on goals and what your opponents are doing and stuff. Because I could do this, but I don't want to spend all six of it, especially because I'm going to be able to charge for six of it is going to go into here if I just. Yeah, but remember, you'll add one too, and you I do know. that beforehand. I know, but I could put six over here, I yeah, or yeah, I could yeah, move yeah. six and not have it. Yeah. So that's why I want to wait till next. There's time. arguments for yeah, either yeah, ways. Yeah. That's what's cool about this game. You could yeah. do things weird ways, and it's still could work out certain ways for you to get things done at yeah. different times. Okay, um, so I will also, can I do anything else? I have no resources here. I've done my cubes. I have no power to spend. I think that's a pass. Um, so I'm gonna take, mm, I take the one that charges power. I will charge two for my one bucket first. I have, and then I have a one charge and four more charges. So I should be able to get a whole bunch in there. If I take that one, or do I need more purple tokens? So then when I do charge a whole bunch, I'll have more power. But I think of that they were saying yesterday, I have less is more manageable. But then if I start doing Gaia forming, then that less is, makes it harder. Uh, do I want to go three range away? Or plus three range? Maybe. Yeah, I'm just going to take the power charging one, I think. Uh, oh, no, but I already have. Fine. Oh, I have this, too. Oh, I forgot to do that. 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 So this one I had, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have one more action, which I forgot. I'm sure you guys are yelling at me. Um, Mel's already passed, so I yeah, would just, passed. He's just, he's I would just, just keep doing actions over and over again, right? Yeah. So it, it is a separate action to pass, yes. Um, I forgot to do this one. Charging for power uh, totally makes sense to do. I forgot I had that already. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I still only have one power. I could turn one power into one gold, which might be good if I'm about to charge. I, I could charge four power next round. 
Uh, for more power charge, plus one power charge, plus maybe more power charge. Uh, no. One, two, three, four, five. No, I'll just leave it. Okay, uh, so that means I will... That changes what booster, obviously, it would. Mm -hmm. I'll take one that's like... Yeah, I'm gonna... Be harder. Mm. Yeah, I'll just do the or, I guess. And then I'll go back. I don't know. Alright, uh, so that's end of round. Uh, so we'll clear off these, we flip okay. our boosters, and you close off the round bonus. Uh, let's go. Okay, uh, so new round. Income. We'll do it simultaneously, but we'll do it whatever. Mm -hmm. I get three, four ore, thanks to my round booster. Gold, I get five, thanks to my income on here and here. It's not a lot, actually. And knowledge, I just get one. And then power, oh, I get a QIC, oh yeah. And then I get charging four power and charging one power, which is just five, I'll just do it all together, putting all six power I have into here. Okay. And uh, I just realized what I did wrong. I'm actually sorry, this yeah. round booster is what I want. Yes, yes, because I have all the power charge, I need more power, I think, maybe I don't. Uh, but then I will fire this income off and put a pow two power in there. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get three ore here plus one up there for four. I am going to get one knowledge. One knowledge to two. For gold, I'm going to get three or five. Ooh, oh, plus four, so nine. I am going to be able to shift two power from there, four power from here, one, two, or sorry, two, so I have six here, and then I get to add one. Okay, and then no QICs for me. Okay. Very nice. Awesome. So Gaia phase, nothing new yeah. happening, nobody put a Gaia former out, yeah. uh, and then you go start the action phase. Okay. Do you mind if I just take a quick break and then... Breaks? Wash That's not an action in the Thank game. You. Let me check. Hold on. Uh, no, no breaks are listed on here. Sorry, Mel. Sorry. I just need you All right. Me. We'll be right back because of Mel. <laughs> just
Okay. All right, we're back. Thank you. We are All back. Right. So I am first. I am You're first. first. You get to do actions. Donuts. So I am spending. Oh, there was uh So John's comment, I'm sure because of the delay too, was isn't passing an action not something you do after taking action? Uh, Mel was doing a free action on a turn. Oh. I'm as sure as why you said that. Sorry, yes. So she spent some gold to take some resource, which is one of her faction-specific free actions. And you can do those free actions before you take an action, which I'm assuming you can do before passing, which is an action. Yeah, because you can do free actions and then you do your pass as your action. But uh, yeah, I assume that's how it works. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe there's like a, a one-liner in the rules that says on a passing turn, you're not allowed to do any of the free actions. I don't know. Let uh, me know if that's incorrect. But yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to spend four power. So putting... How much did I have here? Two, four, six, I have six. Yeah, I'm spending four of it to take two knowledge. <gasps> what the heck? Go ahead. All right, that's the game we're playing. Is that what you wanted? Maybe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so going up on the... Going up is the round bonus on these tracks. Gets two points. Uh, hmm. Wish I did that uh, now, but it's okay. I'm going to take the, my one per round action of charging for power. So one, two, three, four. Our four steps of power charging. I have eight power in my number three bucket. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, sorry, so sorry. I thought, like, I was thinking on the break, I... I was like, why did John say that? Like, what did we do <laughs> on the same turn did multiple actions? It couldn't be after you pass, because I can just keep doing actions. But I, I can... thought, wait, Mel did, Mel quickly was just like, I'm going to do this and this and then this and pass. Yeah, so and... I'll say that that's for free next time when I do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah, more yeah. clear. Sorry. So basically, it's all Mel's fault. Yeah, it is, confusion. it's my fault. I apologize. This is just an extension of this. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I did my action. Yeah, uh, doing sorry. this, you can go ahead. Oh, uh, me. Um, yes. Now, now I will spend four knowledge. I will go up on the track originally, the purple one that I was going to do last time. Okay, the my Gaia project Gaia, track. Gaia former. I will also gain two victory points, please. Oh yes, yes, yes. One, two. And that is me. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend seven power, two, four, six, seven, to take the gain three knowledge action going up to four. Go ahead. Okay. So now I can, I can do, um, this action here. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I'm so sorry. Where Gaia you forming. Gaia form? A so, Gaia forming a transdim planet. Yes. Which so... takes a full round to do. So you're basically, no, no, you don't need those tokens Oh, I don't yet. need that yet. I just want to put this on here, which is adjacent. What are you doing? Yes. Yeah. But I use the spend... one that's on your board that's active. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because you actually don't have access to the ones <laughs> that are not I, on your board. That's the one I meant to grab. Cheater McCheaterson. <laughs> and I need to spend six, two, four, five, and one from there. Okay. Yep. And you can spend those from any of those three bowls you want. Yeah. Why, why don't you want to spend these ones, Mel? You should spend these ones. They're no, good. I like those there. Oh, come on. Three can give me, okay. Give me something. So she's basically putting this Gaia former little spaceship here, uh, which is going to start Gaia forming this purple planet into making it a habitable green planet next round in that Gaia project phase or whatever it's called, Gaia phase. Uh, so she kind of puts her little spaceship there to kind of uh, lock it in. Mm -hmm. And then she'll, in the next round after income, it'll turn into a green planet. She still doesn't have it yet. Uh, but once she builds a mine on there, she'll take back her Gaia former to her board and she can repeat the cycle again. Assuming she has range to a transdim planet in the future. Well, it takes, it takes a, a generation or whatever to, <laughs> to trans, or Gaia form it, uh, is the word. I think that was the problem with the rule book, is it was... Well, we're just can... not really sci-fi fans. Right, we're yeah. not We're not huge in the sci-fi, so, so, it, so hearing all these weird terms, it's like, like... I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> I can guy sure. from this and trans down yep. this and I was planetary like, institute that I okay like, sure okay, whatever yep okay whatever you say <laughs> sorry go ahead um all right uh 
I am going to I am going to upgrade. I'm going to spend five gold, all my gold. I'm going to spend uh, one, two, three ore. And I'm going to build a research station. Only place I can is replacing this. Um, what was this one? My indoor golf course, mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. or something. Um, I'm going to replace that one, which covers up some gold income I have, but it unlocks some knowledge income I have, I can get now. And also when you build any of these here on my board, I can take a tactile again. So I could grab that other one I wanted to grab to get some gold income to help out these buildings I threw back which I feel like is what I'm going to do. And when I do that, I will go up on this track, which will get me two victory points. Thanks to the round bonus. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to upgrade here. Spending, I need to spend six gold going to three and I need to spend two. Go ahead. Uh, and that's not within range of you. I'm going to spend four knowledge to go up on another track. I'm going to go up on the income track and that will get me two more points. Oh, we're tied. I'm catching up. Woo Woo All right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I have two or three gold. Can't do anything with that yet. So I think I will spend three Gold as a free action, one, two, three, to bump up one ore to three for next round. And I think I am passing. This doesn't trigger off. I just really wanted the gold for it, so I mm -hmm. the top didn't matter, yep. so that's fine. I love that one, but sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, but what am I doing for the next one? If so you decide, Kenji's in the chat saying, you're not into sci-fi. Movies like 2001, The Black Hole, V, E.T., Escape from Witch Mountain and Buckaroo Banzai were my were cornerstones of my childhood. Okay, Mel is zero into sci-fi. The only thing sci-fi she even said was like, okay, that was pretty good. Was like Mandalorian. That's oh, yeah. the closest I can get her. She doesn't. I try to watch Star Wars movies before. Mm -hmm. You're like falling asleep. Don't even care. <laughs> Anytime I want to watch anything sci-fi, I would watch it with my daughter in the past, and Mel would just disappear and go watch reality TV or something. Um, and yeah, she has no care for anything with space, aliens, spaceships, any kind of stuff like that. Um, but me, I, yeah, I, my sci-fi background is like the original Star Wars movies. Even the new ones are fine. Um, E.T., obviously I loved E.T. as a kid. That was amazing, of course. Uh, that one, yeah, definitely part of my childhood big time. I believe I had like E.T. sheets mm -hmm. um, and stuff. But yeah, E.T. was awesome. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, love that movie, amazing movie, but I didn't see that till a lot later. Um, but yeah, that movie is great. I love that movie. Um, but I do like uh, like Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I watched Star Trek Deep Space Nine uh, when I was in middle school, I think. Somehow I got hooked on that show, I don't know why, and I'm not a Star Trek fan other than that. I've never seen Battlestar Galactica, but I, I do have it on my list of things to go watch because I now have the board game. Uh, which is awesome, thanks to uh, one of our fans of the channel uh, sent me that. But uh, we will play that eventually on the channel once the COVID grab gets gets out of here. But uh, I do want to go watch some Battlestar Galactica to understand what the game's theme is, kind of. But um, but yeah, just sci-fi wasn't like a huge thing for me growing up. Like I played like space games and stuff on NES, Super NES, and stuff like that. Like I not against sci-fi by any means. It's just like not uh, definitely with Mel. It's she's not into sci-fi at all. So, of course, when I met her, then it's like I'm never watching sci-fi with her. <laughs> I or... will watch it. I just usually tend to fall asleep. Yeah, she doesn't care. Oh, the alien movies. 
Definitely huge as a kid. Uh, I love all the Alien movies. Thank you, Joseph, for bringing those up. The Alien series. Man, I freaking love that. I have lots of sci-fi throughout the years. I just forget some of it. Obviously, you guys bring it up. I remember it. But um, just lately, in like the last 10 years or so, it's been hard. Like, because, again, you know, it's like the board gaming stuff with the theme I was talking about is pulling people into a hobby. You find a theme they like. Uh, so trying to watch TV or a movie with Mel, I have to think of what will she actually pay attention to and not just fall asleep to or disappear you know, who knows where what happens to her when I put on something. <laughs> I'm just like into the Star Wars movie and I look and she's gone and I'm like, what happened? Uh, but yeah. But yeah, Battlestar Galactica, the, the 2000s uh, Battlestar Galactica stuff is what I was told to go watch. Like at least that mini series that started it off was the thing that I need to go watch supposedly. Yeah, watch it with my eyes closed. Exactly, Dan. Yeah. I'll be there in you, the room. You put on those, those glasses that have the eyes painted on the front and just sit there the whole time sleeping. Yeah. I did watch Mandalorian. That was good. So maybe I could try some yeah. newer stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Bob says, I suppose you were too busy lumberjacking trees, just like every young male Canadian does, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. <laughs> uh, Sci fi, Star Trek, EOS, Space 1999. Is that the original series? The original series? Starship Troopers, love that movie. That was a cool movie at the time. I don't know if it still holds up. But uh, if you like the Starship Troopers movie, check out the board game Xeno Shift, which is heavily inspired by that game. Uh, the theme is like scream Starship Troopers. Uh, but yeah, now everyone's talking about all their favorite sci-fi. That's awesome. I will play space games and stuff. Predator is great. Oh, I, I love Predator. I did watch that with you. Yeah, I made well watch Predator. That yeah. was cool. You would call that sci-fi? It is because it has like an alien and he's like, you know, he's, he's an alien from a different planet, comes down and like, you know, has a spaceship oh, okay. and it's like, you know, sci-fi okay. action movie, sure, something, sure. anything that's like kind of, you know, science fiction, yeah, anything yeah. incorporated, you know, like a futuristic world, like, uh, I would consider, um, what's that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? The Terminator one? No. Uh, yeah, those are kind of sci fi okay, so Maybe not though. Maybe not. I don't know if that's considered sci-fi. Maybe it is. Um, but what's the one where he goes to that like red planet and everything, and then there's Running Man. I never saw that. Uh, what's the one? Such a cool movie. Ah, oh, I can't remember the name. Where he's got the thing up in his head, and he's got to pull it out of his nose. And man, I love that movie. I just forget what it's called right now. Brain fart. Total Recall. <laughs> I couldn't recall totally what the name was called, uh, but now it's come to me. Thank you so much, Sawdust. I appreciate it. Yeah, I couldn't remember the name. Super generic name, Total Recall. Like, But I, I failed to totally recall it, so I couldn't remember it yet. No, not the red. <laughs> I just remember a lot of red in the movie, because there's like some red planet he's on, and he's like dreaming, and he's dying on that planet. And then there's like that woman who's like, you know, like fake, and... I, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of crazy stuff in there. The robotic cab driver and stuff. A lot of cool things I remember seeing that movie when I was younger. I was like, ooh, that's the future. You know what's a cool future movie? Is Demolition Man. That's another sci-fi, like, futuristic kind of weird one that... Uh, maybe it's not really sci-fi, I don't know, but I love that one. Anyways. Thank you, Kanji, for derailing the stream. Now you can leave. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's cool. We're, yeah. Any Arnold movie, man. I love Arnold. Yeah, love Arnold. Love Stallone. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, all those kind of action movies. Now now we have new new guys like today. Those versions of that. It's like The Rock. The Rock and stuff he's in. And who else is like a new... Uh, Jason Statham and, you know, those kind of guys. They're just like... Those kind of movies. Some of them are super cheesy and garbage, but some of them are fun. And uh, Yeah, I love those. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. I have passed. So I did my free action again to get the ore, and then I passed. Tell you. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, did I not pass yet? What did I do last? You went up a track. Oh, yes, that's right. I spent some knowledge. And now I think I'm tapped out. I feel I have one ore. I, I could get one gold. But I would need at least two oh, QIC, which I could turn into ore only. Was there something else I can do? No. 
Yeah, mine just passed, I think. Yeah, let me... Uh... Oh, you already passed. Mm -hmm. So you got... I got one. the okay, range okay. and the power. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass also. And I'm going to take this one. And put back this one. And I'll flip, and then we flip back, and we clear off these. And we flip the round bonus tile thing. We're now in round three. Income. Uh, so I'll just go here. Mm -hmm. uh, six gold. Plus another two. It's eight gold. Uh, my knowledge is two. My ore, three from here, one from here. So that's four more ore up to five. And I get a QIC. And another QIC. So I'm at three. Uh, what gave you the first one? Oh, this one. I had one left from last round. No, yeah. And then I one. have yeah, one yeah. and one. Yep. And then power charging stuff. I can do four power charge, another two power charge. Oh, so uh, two, and then I'll just do four more. That's what it looks like. Okay. Uh, or I have two, three. Uh, one extra over here, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to six. Gold, you have two over here. Two, uh, I have six here, so going to eight. Uh, and then, and then uh, knowledge? knowledge, I have only one. Okay. And, and then, then charging. power. So I have, I get yeah, one. Gain one, yeah. And then I can charge With two. The, I guess it doesn't matter. They're both going to the make it there. Will, yeah, yeah. Do it so you. one, two, and then, yeah. So that's like that. Okay. Now, Gaia phase. Yep, Gaia, Gaia phase. Yep, like we'll turn this. that purple planet into a green one. And this is all going to come home here. And that slides down to bucket one. Okay. All right, you're first. I'm first. Action phase, go nuts. Powers. <laughs> Bob's gaming handle was MDK187. Murder, death, kill, 187. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, Devin Lester Man was awesome. Okay, I'm just thinking for one quick second. Sorry. So, I get four points. That I'm doing for that. Was I the only one that watched Demolition Man mm -hmm. to see that the only fast food joint that survived the, uh, like, the, to the future that survived the fast food wars Did was we... Taco Bell? I, I was oh. kind of like, so that stuck to, stuck in my head from the movie when I was a kid. I was like, no way that would be, that would survive the wars, like, and over the years, like, more bad news and stuff about the quality of Taco Bell and all that. And they've been, in Canada at least, they've been closing up shop all over the place, um, but I always thought it was hilarious as a kid, and it still stuck with me to this day. It's the most memorable thing about that movie. What it, was it? Is that in the, they, the guys in the movie get frozen and then unfrozen way in the future. So it's like these two brute, like cop yeah. and criminal yeah. that are then forwarded, I don't know, 30, 40 years in the future, whatever it is, 20 years. I don't remember, but it's like a like a rundown future, but it has like a dystopian, like a built up area. And the only restaurants that survived, like fancy or not, Our that survived Bell. the fast food wars was Taco Bell's. So everywhere is a Taco Bell, even in like the rich areas, the like Taco Bell stuff looks like <laughs> nice restaurant food and stuff. Um, but I always thought that was super hilarious. Cause I was like, no effing way Taco Bell would survive. And as the years passed, like news came out about their quality of me, where they sourced their food financially, other, other restaurants came out and have been destroying them. So they're like disappearing at least around where we are. Taco Bells are like yeah, going right. away, yeah. Uh, and which is funny over the years. And and like I don't know anyone who really eats there um, in Canada at least. I don't know if in the U.S. they're different and have different food or different places in the world. But yeah, it's never something that someone's like, let's go to Taco Bell. Yeah, I feel like when Pepsi bought them or whatever, <laughs> they kind of like went down the the crapper even more. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> went down the crapper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time Cop was amazing. Jean Claude Van Damme. I've watched all. This. Actually, I watched a bunch of Jean Claude Van Damme movies uh, over the past like year. I went back and watched Bloodsport, and uh, I watched Universal Soldier. Um, what else? I, I went back and watched a couple more too. I just can't remember which ones off the top of my head, but I love Jean Claude Van Damme. He's awesome. But yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, okay. So good. Such a good stream. <laughs> Boring Euro, entertaining stream. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, I am going to build a mine on this planet here. 
So that comes back. So I need to spend two gold, one, two, and one ore. Fifth element's a great one, too. Fifth okay. element's a great one. Let's put that on there because I have a green planet now. And then these mines give us four victory points, right? When we build, build them? Uh, on a green planet, yes. Done. Oh, four victory points yeah. you want up to 15. Whoa, whoa, relax. Yeah. So what you're saying is I, I need to spend these QIC cubes to do that? I don't know. Instead of trying to get one of these things again? I don't Damn, know. Damn, I forgot about the round bonus again. I always forget about the round bonus. Gobbling up green planets, eh? That's how it's going down? All right. I don't know. Uh, it was just right beside. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It just worked, but... Oh, you have the range one. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you could get to some other ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I can't really, like, block them all off or anything. Mm -mm. I better act fast, then. Better act fast. Uh, yeah, I will spend... Uh, one, two, and one ore, plus a QIC. And another QIC, so that I can go to this one with a mine. And you can passively lose two victory points and charge three power if you'd like. Yes, please. All right, your turn. Okay. Okay. Oh, and I get two, four points for doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. you want to put one of your thingies on the green? One of my thingies on the green. Satellite? Satellite. So mark, mark a green planet? You might have other ones, I don't know, but that's... You can also move me up or oh, yeah, you I up done, or whatever. You're, you're in charge of that track, man. Yeah, I'll look at this after the I have to manage round. this giant board and this board and this yeah. planet, this half of the board. you got to manage all this. Yeah, after this we do point. this round, I'll make sure that it all lines up. Okay, I'm going to upgrade... I'm going to upgrade here, which is going to cost me five. So I go to one gold and three, one, two, three, going to two. Uh, this will give me a tactile, which actually. That may not be terrible. Thanks, Matt, for the Scott Adkins recommendation. I, I didn't know who that was, but uh, I will check out some of his stuff. Oh, he was in Expendables? Expendables 2? Okay, that's cool. Thank you, Matt. I had I did not know. I did not know. Actually, that's not the worst, maybe. I think I'm going to take this... Tactile. And when I take this one, I can go up any track. Oh, actually, do I want the four power charge instead? Yes, I will take the four power charge one. This lets me go up any track. I will, right now, I will go up on the orange track. So you get to instantly charge three power. Which will put these here. And now you'll get four victory points at least at the end of the game from being on the level three, four, or five of a track. And that was... And you get four points for each one. And I got that textile because I upgraded this here. So now you can do this. Passive power Passive, gain yeah. of one. Yay. Charge power. Okay. Or char power power charge. Power charge. Uh, I just thought of it. Best sci-fi movie uh, from my childhood. Most serious. Most work put into it. Best IP, best stories, you know, all that stuff. You can tell they they did not, you know, sci-fi was the most serious thing. And and I recommend watching it if you, if you want to see like a really seriously high budget, well done sci-fi movie is uh, Spaceballs. <laughs> so yeah, go watch Spaceballs. John Candy for the win. But anyways... <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's all you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the shorts, yes, may the shorts be with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right. Go ahead. 
Uh, we're doing planets, green planets. Oh, I have two range. I didn't need to spend one of my QICs. Oh. I forgot You're I did that. You're supposed to manage this board. I, I know, but it's a lot of info to remember. I'm, I'm, I'm moving tokens on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not remembering the symbols that are on it. Yeah, I, I, I was even thinking, I'm like, man, I should be able to get the more planets. And I was like, I, I don't have enough QIC to do what I thought I was going to be doing. But I do. Oh, I do. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Let's a QIC. Uh, one, two, and one or. Another mine. I'm going to go here. Get out of here. And I'm going to take four, four victory points. One, two, three, four. It's very not efficient, but I could do something like that. Uh, okay, me? You have one here, too. I know. Get out of here. I'm going to build a federation here. So this is three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Right? A seven to build a federation or eight? A uh, so minimum of seven. Okay, so I have seven. So I don't Ooh, have to wow. spend any power because they're all connected. So yep. we'll do that. Holy crap. I will take... Any token you want. I need this one. We're going to need some gold. Wow. So I will get seven victory points, please. And six gold. Uh, seven. One, here. two, one, three, four, five, two, six, seven. seven. Okay. You're in the lead. Thanks. Go okay. Ahead. Um, guess I'm going to spend another QIC. Oh, this one's not three range. Or two range. I couldn't do this one. One, two. Oh, it's three. You have to spend a QIC. To yeah, do that, right? I'd have to spend a QIC, which I, I'll just, mm, I would have to do anyway. Yeah, I just realized. I thought it was the same distance as this one, but uh, I will I just. I guess you could just move it to this one. No, I'll just, you know, I want, I want to be a jerk and block your possible ones. I mean, yeah. you could still probably get there or there anyway, so. I don't know that I'm really. Yeah, I'll just spend another right QIC. Um, so, anyways, so I have no QIC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now I'm going to. How much? Four? I think I'm going to do an upgrade. I'm going to go one, two, or one, two, three uh, money. And we'll upgrade. Uh, this pet store, and I'm going to put out another indoor golf course. Awesome. So I could, for two power, or two, two victory, victory points, points, I could charge three power. Two, three, and then I'm going to do four. That would give me two, four, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I will spend two, and I will charge three. Okay. should have done that because it just gives you power but two four six seven eh. well now i can do something else actually now i can be more efficient thank you thank you you good yep go ahead i will spend five of my power two four five here mm -hmm. and then i can put a mine out and this gives me two terraforming two units. terraforming units plus i have a range of three Plus three. So Plus your three. default range is one. Yeah. So you're actually a total range of four. But, but, I think you can just cover that as part of this. Because um, it's one time use, right? So. Oh, does it have to be separate? I don't know. I, I wouldn't think oh, so. Oh, if it has to be separate, then I can't I don't do what think I want to so. do. But they are two separate actions. That's the problem. Oh. I, I'm not sure if those can be put together. Oh, if I can't put them Because they are two separate actions, right? But it, it seems weird. If I can't. Then I can spend a terraforming, uh, a QIC to do what I want to do, I guess. Yeah, that's an orange thing. This is a purple. Is that allowed? No, you can't. No, you oh, can't. Okay. okay, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'll still take. Okay. I'll still take that because I, wasn't I want sure. the two. Uh, yeah, that's I okay. don't know if I've done that before. Uh, yeah, I'm not also, sure. I don't need this. Okay, so I'm still spending that. I will spend the one QIC to give me an additional range. Now I have a range of two. Three, because it's a plus two. And by default, oh, you have one range. Yeah, sorry, but I only need two. Um, and I will place <laughs> a mine here. So this cost me two, which I spent. Yep, yep. The, okay, so that cost me two mine. gold and one ore. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I have 
one gold, one ore, two knowledge. Uh, read this. Mm -hmm. Have this for power. Let me just charge for power. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So now now I will use this for the three range. Token on white scoreboard. Oh, uh yeah, yeah. Uh put your satellite. Oh, yeah. I'll 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 look at all this after this round because no, I think that we're you just complaining that I didn't do it. I know. You need to. So I'm spending the three range. Yeah, yeah. For a one-time action. For a yeah. one-time action. One, two, three. I'll place a mine here. I don't need to pay anything because yep, it's my planet. planet. I just yep. need to pay to build it. One, two, and one. If power. I'm going to spend uh, four power. Yeah, I'll spend four power, and I'll take, hmm, I think knowledge, me jack some knowledge, two knowledge, go ahead. I will spend, I will put this on this orange token to be able to charge four power. One, two, three, four, go ahead. I'll spend four knowledge. To go up on a track. Not a QIC. I wouldn't have enough gold. I'm going to go up on the income track. And I'll get to charge three power right now. And you go. Okay, I will spend three gold for free to give myself an ore that's free, and then I think I'm passing. I think I'm passing. I don't have anything else. Uh, I don't want to give that to you. That might be helpful. Sorry, I'm just going to pick my thing if you do want to go. Yeah, I just want to actually undo this mm -hmm. and actually go up across this one, actually, so I get a QIC. Sure. So I still charge the same three power, but uh, yeah, I want a QIC. Yeah. I'm going to try something different. I want that. I think we're going to go with this one. Okay, uh, so I'm going to spend one power as a free action to get one gold. Okay, and then I'm going to spend the two gold and one ore to build another mine. And I'm going to spend a QIC to go two range and then make that planet inhabitable and go here. Mm -hmm. And that'll get me four points for the round bonus. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Okay. Can I have a satellite for you? Oh, yeah, thank you. For this, you're on brown. So you're on, on yellow, brown, brown oh, yeah, yeah. and green. And green. So you should be at three. Okay. And then this one, we definitely have to count this out. I think you're winning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yellow's at seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, total five, buildings, six. right? Yeah, yeah. Six. Okay. Yep. All right. Continue. Sorry, I've already passed. I feel like I'm good. I feel like I have no power or anything. And, yeah, I'll pass. Okay. And oh, let me grab. Um, okay. 
Hmm. Is that the one? Oops. Oh, that's here. Just thinking, I have charge, I have charge. Yeah, maybe that's not hot. Get the gold. Yeah, I'll take this one. I'll throw this one back. All right. Okay. So I'll flip this one. Yep. Income. So I get four, five, or. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Five, or knowledge, two, two knowledge. Gold, I have three, four, so seven, 11, 12, 13. And I have a green cube. And I think that's all of it. Oh, power charging charge. stuff power. Yeah, yeah. Power charging of six total. So we'll do two of it, then we'll do four of it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh so or one, two, three, four. Uh yep, four. Oh, and I gotta flip this. Five. So I was at one. So I go to six. Uh Knowledge one, two, mm -hmm. I think is all. So I go to three. Uh, gold is six. Oh, uh, you have three more over here. Six, nine. Okay. Uh, power charging. You have a three power charge over here and a four on your board. Okay. So let's do the three power charge there. Uh, no, let's. Yeah, sure. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Then I have four on my board. One, two, three, four, and then I will gain one. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That is that. Okay. And I'm first. Mm -hmm. Two, four, six, eight. I just need to think for a minute. Yeah, take your time. Because no rush. No rush. You will be able to snag things. Jonas is back. Hello. Hello. Mel and the Destroyer will humble Rob today. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying. But... I'm so far in the lead, though. Look at this. It's huge. Mm. I'm just kidding. By the end of the game, we're all going to be like back here, but like have gone all the way around. It's crazy, but. I know. Or I could do that. Or I could do. back and then I can still do more um if I do that I can go up I don't need to gain okay I think I need to spend I think I need to spend four Four power. Four power to gain two or two. I think I need it for what I need Ooh, to do. Oh, spicy. I need that for what I want to do, I think. I will spend four. <laughs> I will just charge for power. Go ahead. Probably with that, but actually, no. With the four back. I will actually fire off. What do I have? Three here. Two would get me what I need. Yep. I'm going to uh, spend four power. And I'm going to take... Let me be able to spend three. I can... No, I'll spend all four. I'll just take knowledge. Uh, two. Go ahead. Okay. Two, 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just counting out what I'd have left. That would have been four. Which I can do that for two. Okay, I think this will work. I will spend six, or I will upgrade this guy, which costs me six ore going to two and six gold going to three. Okay, first that gives me five victory points. One, two, three, four, five. Then I get a tactile. I will take. You can even take an. Uh, oh no, you're not on the no. floor yet. I will take actually. Mm. I'll take seven victory points. Ooh. You will. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirty. And, did you and then I get to, but I get to go up a track, oh, which yeah, is yeah. this one, because I took this one. So you get so two ore. Two ore, which I need. One, two. Okay. Where'd you do this all? Here. Okay, so, so you now passive you to, yeah. power. Yeah. I will lose one victory point, charge two power. All right. Um... I'm going to just charge four power. Go ahead. Okay. I will spend the four power that I have here to take seven gold. What do I have here? Three. So I go to ten. Mm. Mm. Yep. Uh, I'm going to my bonus. Uh, I'll spend four knowledge. I'll go up one on this track to gain two ore. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What'd you do, sorry? Just went up on this track. Oh, for four knowledge? To gain two ore for four knowledge. Yep, okay. All right, I will... Mm, I'm going to lose out on that one, but I think this is more victory points, so it's fine. Okay, I am going to upgrade here. Bring that back. Spending three, one, two, three, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, Textile? That gives me, yeah, that gives me five points. Uh, no, that one doesn't give me five points. Oh. That's fine, but I need to tactile. Uh, hmm. One time. I think I will take this one, which will give me one knowledge for every color. And I think I have for every planet type you've colonized. Pla planet type. So I have red, orange, two, green is three, white. So I have four. Are they match what you've put your one, cubes two, on? One, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go to seven. And then that lets me go up on any track. I think I'm going to go up here. Yeah. All right. I will spend six ore going down to one and six gold uh, going down to seven. And I'll build one of these guys. Do I see or knowledge? Or knowledge is like going up on track every round. I see is good for moving around the board. Uh, I'll do this one that unlocks my two knowledge income, and I can only build it on this. Boom. 
And now I get a tectile. Oh, yeah, I cover up one. <laughs> whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. You also get five points. Don't forget that. Mm hmm. Okay, five points. Uh, tectile. I mean, I guess I could just make back the knowledge loss or do what you did. Oh, sorry. I upgraded this one. Oh, yeah. So I lose a victory point and passive power of two charge. Sorry. And then which one did you upgrade? Uh, this one way over here, which oh, okay. is not. Even right. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Mm, so this one, how many plant types? I'm on green, yellow, brown, still the same. Only three types. So that will only give me three knowledge, but that's enough to go up on a track right now. Or this would let me go up on a track, but I would only get it two more times. But it also gives me more gold. Oh, but then it going up on a track could lead to more income in general. Oh, but I get to go up on a track when I take it anyway. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Let's take this one. Yep, and I'll go up three knowledge. Okay. And then I'll go up on this track and I'll charge three power. And I don't know if that does anything else. I don't think so. I think you're good to go. Okay, I'll spend four. Going to three. And then we'll go up on a track. And I think. Hmm. I think I will go up also on the orange, please. Yes. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um. Mm -hmm. I will probably can I upgrade no one ore. Need more ore. So with that in mind, getting more ore income, ore income, one shot of ore, or income the next round possibly. I don't know if that's the right play. I see it'd be good too. Um, get four next turn, so I don't really care about that actually. Um, hmm. I'll go up. Mm, doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm gonna take. Uh, I do get on new planet types and have more buildings. This is not going up tracks, but going up tracks makes it easier, maybe. Okay, let me, let me look over here. If I take this one, that's two terraforming steps, which could get me on a red or a black. Which there are reds and blacks that are within two. Yeah, okay. Uh, I am going to uh, spend five power. I'll cover up this one to get two terraforming steps. I'll spend one or two gold to get a mine on this planet, which is within my two range and takes two terraforming steps, which I generated from here. And I'm expanding my galaxy. Go ahead. Okay. Um... Although saving that for next turn would have got me two victory points instead of doing it now. Mm. So that might've been silly, but now that I see the round bonuses, <laughs> it's okay, keep going. <laughs> Oh man, this game. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Cost me three. Oh, that I think I can do this. Okay. So I can do one, two, three. 
for reaction to gain an ore. It's free action. Then I will. Oh, no, no, no. Then I can't do that. <laughs> then I can't do that. The fun of Gaia One, Project. Two, this, I, I want to do this. No, no, wait. But maybe that's better. No, wait. I could do this, though. Maybe I should do that. Analysis, per analysis paralysis trap this game is. I think I just have to wait until next turn then to do that. But what's more efficient this turn? This is. I can't do that. Oh, I've made a mistake. So. Hmm. I'm gonna... uh, we were doing this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joseph's mentioning if you take any of the bottom text, you can go up on any track. Yeah, mm -hmm. we explained that at the beginning. We yeah, know did that. we not? I think I did when I took yeah. them. Maybe every time we took it, we went up on tracks that were like above it. But oh, we totally yeah. know that you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. That's weird if we did. Yeah, maybe you taking this one, we both went up like the orange. Maybe. Because it's like kind of under it. But yeah, definitely because all the multicolors here remind you that you can actually choose any track. Okay, I'm going to actually just spend, uh, put a power, or cover this to charge four. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right. Um, I will spend four knowledge, and I will just go up on this track. Oh, I think I just figured out how I might be able to do it. Okay, go. It's your turn. Do it. I know. I'm just, in my head, I'm thinking it out to make sure. Okay, let's do... Oops. No, that's silly. That's silly. Okay. Let's do done that. Do with this five. Maybe I do nothing and I wait. What's this one again? Anytime you get a terraforming unit, oh, either from yeah, yeah. here or by spending them with ore or whatever, yeah. uh, any unit gives you two points. Yeah, okay. So terraform away on that round and you'll get more points. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to spend four gold going to one to give myself a knowledge for free. Then I will go up, I'll spend four, and I'll go up on a track. Which track would you like to go up on? Mm -hmm. So anyone who's watching this live right now who doesn't have chat open, maybe you're watching on a phone or a TV or something, uh, or full screen on a computer, uh, the chat is going crazy talking about like childhood sci-fi movies, bunch of crazy things, um, and different shows to watch and stuff. Uh, so get in on that if... Uh, there's some good info going by in there. Mm -hmm. And just ignore Bob Chapman completely. He's just the peanut gallery. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to go up on this one. <laughs> so that let me, lets me cross. I get to charge three more power. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Uh, go ahead. All right. I went up on this one. Oh. And you charge your three power I when did. you cross? I did. Okay, perfect. Yeah. What do I got here? Two, four, six, eight, nine. Uh, okay. So I have some gold left. I have... A QIC. I have no ore. There's something I was thinking of doing. Do power. There was something. Maybe I did all already. Maybe able to pass, I think. I think I might be good. I was just there's something else I was already thinking of. I don't think without ore. I'm not building buildings. QIC, I could trade, oh, I could trade QIC for an ore. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Is that worth it, though? 
do I see for an ore? Opens up the possibility of a mine. But then terraforming I don't have. So it would have to be like my home planet and within two range. Doesn't exist. Could nope. I'll pass. I'll pass. I'll try passing Whoa. first for once. Whoa. See what happens. Whoa. Um <laughs> I'll take this one. Yep, I'll take this one, flip this over, put this one. Oh, when I put this one back. Oh, I forgot about this. Uh, one, two, three. I know I was going to take Victory it just because I knew you were going to, but I, yeah, I need the ore. Okay. Okay. And Carry on. I'm passing. Oh. Awkward. <laughs> hmm. Do I want the gold? Gold is flexible. Do I want the range? I don't know that I need it right now. Or do I want the QIC? That will only give me... I don't think I necessarily need that either. I think I'm going to take the gold. Gold is more flexible for me. And I will just default get one victory point as well when I trade that in at the end. Okay. So clear all these things off. You can flip the round bonus tile over. Clear off your orange little power there that you've covered up. Mm -hmm. um, and then we flip around boosters. Mm -hmm. And income. Uh, so or five, six... Four. Whoa. Plus you get uh, oh. two more. Gold, four, eight, plus three is 11. Uh, 16. Uh, knowledge, three. And then power. Oh, QIC off here. And then power charging. When do I take this? I have four power charge up here, four power charge here. I get two power gain here. So let's do a four power charge first. Might as well do the other four. Oops. Four power charge. One, two, three, four. And then I'll throw two power in the mix. Right here. And I think I've done my income. If I've done okay. it correctly, I believe so. Go ahead. Okay. Or I have three here. Plus two up there, so I have mm -hmm. five. So I was at one, I'm going to six. The round bonus this time is throwing mines down on the board for two points apiece. Mm -hmm. Then what am I doing next? Gold, three, seven, 11. I was at one, so I go to 12. Uh, knowledge, two, three, four. Four, I'm finally getting some knowledge. <laughs> Power. That's what this game does to you, it gives you knowledge. Okay, first I'm going to charge the four from there. So two, and then four, two. And then I'll charge the four from here. And then I'll add one here. Okay, and that looks like everything. Go ahead. Hmm. No. All right, I'm going to spend five power. Yeah, I'll spend five power. I'll take this one. And I'll spend one, two gold, one thing, one ore. And I'll drop a mine on this black planet. Uh, which I, I get two victory points first. Mm -hmm. One, two, and, and then, then you can passive one. power gain for one. Yep. Or passive power charge, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that is that okay go ahead all right i think i should charge my power first whoopsie that's fine whoopsie whoopsie okay i think i'm going to charge four power two four so i have flexibility on what i want to do go ahead mm -hmm. i'm going to Mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to. I think I'm going to upgrade. Where's my building right here? Uh, you have so much power. So maybe it's better to do this. Do this. That takes up two of this. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'll spend one, two, three gold and two ore. And I'll upgrade one of my mines. Has to be in your neighborhood. So it'll be this one. Oh, but then that gives you so much power. But yeah, I guess, I guess it's the play. We'll do it. Okay, I will take one for free. Uh, no, no, you take. Uh, oh, that guy. Yeah, sorry. Three, but you can only actually charge two. So if you want to so do I... this, you'll lose one victory point. Uh, hold on. Two. two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Do I need to? Is the question. Um. No, I don't think I need to. Which just give me 11. Yeah, I will, I will, I will. So one victory point. Okay, uh, and that's me, go ahead. I'm going to spend four power for seven, two, four, one, two, three, and four. All right. Um, I will upgrade. Yeah, I'm going to build. Um, So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. We're gonna upgrade, put one of these uh, indoor aquariums. And this is worth two power, two power. There. Yep. This will go back. We'll charge Keep one the for passive free. power. Yep. I get a tactile though. Um, a tactile. Hmm. Oh, I did this in the wrong order. Did this in the wrong order. Need to rewind something? Yes, I do need to rewind something. So, so put my power under back. your power gain, did you lose? Nope, because it was the free, it was this one. No, no. Because uh, it was here. I can't reach that. Oh, yeah. That's I, you. I did the mess up before then. So you shouldn't have been able to get all the power that I told you to get before, right? Okay, so then I would have two victory points. Yeah, and you would and have only would have charged have one, one power. Yeah, yeah, one less power you would have charged. And it was from here. Yeah, for some reason time. I thought this was you. I don't know why. It's probably because I played yesterday and this was the AI. That's so okay. it's definitely messing with me. But uh, So I'll undo that, and then that undoes one, two, three, four, five gold, and one, two, three ore, and puts this back out here, because mm -hmm. I can already build a federation. This is already the same. Two. Oh, I only need six. Oh, I'm so... Mm -hmm. Wow, I've the whole time I've been thinking seven for federations in my head. I forgot about my faction ability. Awesome. But I think this is two, four, seven anyway. Mm. Yeah, I should have taken like this tile, right? At some point to make that four. So I could just join it with like this. It'd be six. But that's okay. Let's destroy some power. Uh, whoops, I'll just leave my board. Destroying two power. And we'll drop two satellites down. 
think we'll make a federation right here. And I'll grab uh, which tile? I'll grab this six point knowledge one. Yes, and it'll give me one, two knowledge and give me six victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is that. Go ahead. Okay, I am going to upgrade here. That is going to cost me only three gold. One, two, three, and two. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Hey, Rob, don't forget your faction ability. Oh, yeah, I just remember. <laughs> I upgraded here if you want to do pass power. Uh, yeah, I'll lose a victory point and charge two power. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'll spend. Spend six gold. One, two, three, four, five, six gold. And I'll spend one, two, or I'll upgrade this one go ahead okay i will spend uh, i'm gonna put a mine here i'm gonna spend one or two gold i only need to where is that i only need to spend one per yep one per terraforming so i only have to spend one more to put that there i will get two victory points uh, you're red. Yep. One, two. That's me then. Where did you do that? Here. Too far from okay, me. Okay, okay. I will... I think this is right. This is where three, four, five, six. So I'm going to build a federation, destroying a power, putting a satellite right here. And I will take... Let's take a QIC cube one. So I'll get eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll take a QIC cube going to three. And I built another federation. Go ahead. Okay. I will upgrade here. That will cost me six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and two. One, two. And that was here, so that was too far from you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I will spend uh, four knowledge. I'll go up one on this track. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to spend also four knowledge. I'm going to go up on this track, which will give me two, two ore. ore, which I need. Mm hmm. Three range, I'll say. All right, so I'm going to go. Uh, three range. Yep, so I have three range. I'm going to build here. So I'll spend a QIC cube to go on that planet. I'll spend one ore and two gold to slap a mine over here. And I'll get two victory points for dropping down a mine on this round. Go ahead. Okay. I will upgrade here. That is going to cost me six. Going to two and two. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten buildings, if you could. Ten buildings. And you are at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buildings on the second end goal track. And then different planet types. I still haven't gone into really anything. I'm on black, brown, yellow, and green. So I should be at four on that track, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm on black planet. So here, let me put one of oh, these sorry. over there. And you're at four? Yeah. I need to somehow sneak on to red, but the literally last red is on the borders over here. So, yeah. Um, and then, what else can I sneak on? A white? A white's nearby, but that cost me three terraforming. And what else have I not gone on? Orange. Why do I keep ignoring oranges? Oh, I have range to get to oranges now easier. I can do that. All it's right. your turn. It's my turn. Mm-hmm. So then I will charge for power. I think. Yes. One, two, three, four. Okay. I will spend seven to get three knowledge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do this. Mm -hmm. Three gold, two ore. I think at this point that doesn't matter. Okay. Three gold, two ore. No neighborhood buildings. I would need more. I have enough. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to get to this orange planet. I think I can do it. I have three range, so that is one, two, three from there. I can build a mine for one ore and two gold. And to terraform it, uh, that would be one level, which I don't have. Because that would be three. So I can't do it. I thought I, I had enough. put that stuff back. Obviously, I'll rewind my turn. Uh, or my action, if I figure out that I don't have another way. Uh, three power I could, but I didn't have three power. Okay, uh, so I'll rewind as you indicated. And I cannot get there. So, um, I can just upgrade. Range of... Yeah, so with a range of three, um, plus I'll throw away a QIC cube of two more. So that's a total range of five. Uh, so I think one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. And I'll throw away another QIC cube, and I'll spend one ore and two gold. Unless I did that wrong. I don't know if that's right. Um, and I'll slap this on a green planet, which will get two victory points. Boom. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Trample. Yellow planet at bottom. Oh, duh. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that next. That's, yeah, I forgot I have my home planet. I actually made it over there. I totally forgot it was right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I forgot about my home plane and I can actually reach it now. I wrote that off in my head, but then I actually got near it. So yeah, I should probably do that. Derp. Derp derp. Not a different planet type though. Hey, hey Zagabra. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh do I do that? And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -mm. I still only have range of one. I have no QICs. Jason, the end of the stream will not happen in five hours. No, no. Maybe another we'll one more round. Here, it's like a Euro game. They always do that, right? You only have few actions, few resources. So the first couple rounds are like super quick. And then as you get later, you have more resources, more actions. The turns just drag. There's more options. You're trying to min-max your points. They, they always stretch out. So yeah, probably another hour. <laughs> not five. 
Yeah, the game is definitely faster multiplayer, I think, than it is solo, at least to newer players, I feel. All right, I think if I just do that, I don't want to be an artist. Yeah. Uh, we are going to form a federation. Okay. So I need to spend one, two, three power. Put, connect these. Two, four, six, seven. Yep. Take a token. I'm going to try something. If I'm down by two points, I might be sad. But I'm going to take this one for six victory points and two knowledge. Hoping that... Uh, so six. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm just going to spend one ore and two gold. Build a mine on my home planet right here. Yeah, two. And two more points. Up to 50. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, I think this is a good time. We're going to spend four knowledge going to one. I will go up on this track here. Mm -hmm. Which will give me. Flip uh, a federation token first. Oh, sorry. This will give me another six victory points and two more knowledge. One, two, and three, two. four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is true, Bob. Very true. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. Could charge some power for some gold, but I think I want to go first next turn mm -hmm. yep i'm gonna pass Take this one. All right, I'm a past. Okay, I am also going to pass. When I pass, I will get one victory point because I just have one on the green. And then this is the question: What do I take? I mean, all of these things are beneficial. One, two. Five, seven. do that i don't think so but maybe i can try maybe i can try well, let's take this one because i want the ore okay okay so end of the round we'll clear off all this stuff flip your booster flip the round end tile these are clear okay uh income mm -hmm. oh, let me flip sorry uh so ore one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or knowledge. One, two, three to four. Uh, gold. Uh, seven, eleven, uh, fifteen. What's number four? Is nineteen gold. And a QIC somewhere. And some power charging of four up here, four down here. So we'll just do two, four, and five. Full charged. I think that's all my income stuff. Go ahead. All right. Two or here plus two. There is four. Oops. Okay. Knowledge. I have four. Go to seven. Money. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
14, 18. 18, so let's go, let's go with 15. 16, 17, 18. Uh, QIC is no power charge of four. Oh, four over here. So you let's got... do that first. Four here. Four let's do. Board. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, you charge that first. Four here. And then you dump then in I your dump two in... or three. One. Three total. Hmm. Yeah, one on that icon, but then two on this icon. Right? Oh, two on that one. Yeah. So it is three total, but yeah. you could have separated it. Charge nope, first, drop one in, charge that's again, good. drop two in. But I think you did it in the right order. No, or the okay. most efficient order, I think. Okay. I still have trouble with that sometimes. I okay. realize I do it in the wrong order. Okay, uh, so I'm going... F oh, Gaia phase, nothing. Nope. Okay. Uh, actions. So I'm definitely going to spend four knowledge first. So that way I can advance on this track and get here before you do. Mm. Of course, why not? And uh, I jump... I flip over a Federation token as the cost. Only one player can get to the top of each track. Yeah, uh, and when I do that, I get a one-time shot of three or one, two, three, six gold. Uh, so we'll go to 25 gold. And then I charge six power, which unfortunately doesn't do anything for me. But if I spent this power first, I would look up and you'd be there anyway. So, and that charge of power would benefit you way more than it would me. So I, I just had to... Take an inefficient play to stop no, you. No, but I think that makes you win now because now I can't do... How does that make me win? Get out of here. Well, because I think... I know I Shut think... Shut up. No, because you're already beating me. And, oh, I'm and, so like, in the No, lead. in these tracks, right? Am and I then, for sure, though? Yeah. Yeah. There's and now so I think... so much we could do. You want to just end it is what you're saying? No, no, no. I'm just thinking that I should have thought of maybe uh, passing I earlier to go first. I can spend powers free actions before I go there. Uh, but I can't do one of these. I, I could spend that. You're right. Ah, you're right. So I could just do these like more inefficient ones, which would make sense, right? Because this, this, I keep thinking of only doing these with my power, because that that's uh, like you get good stuff for it. It blocks out another player, and I, these free actions, I just almost ignore them almost all the time, unless I'm like one resource short. But in this case, you're right. I should have free action before. I could just like gain some stuff. Um, so let's just do. I don't know what I need exactly, but I'll just do three for an ore, and I'll do uh, four for a QIC before that, and then I would charge six power off of that. Yeah, so I forgot about the free actions on here are totally an option. I just ignore them most of the time because I just feel they're not the greatest. There's probably better stuff I maybe could have done there with that, but that's fine. I'll, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. I forgot about that part. Learning new stuff every time. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'll take one more ore. You should have another ore. Did you forget this ore? Oh, maybe yes, I did. Even so, I don't think it's enough. Oh, I really should have passed earlier last turn. Yeah, I thought you would have for sure when we were both sitting on that. I'm like, she's just going to do her normal, like, yeah, I'll just pass. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I'm, I'm like, oh, but that's fine. I still would be getting this income, which I'd still be happy about, but it's four extra victory points. And just a whack ton of resources. Yeah, but getting it, getting them both in the same turn is more efficient. Mm -hmm, exactly. That's why I didn't push it last time. I was going to do it and be a jerk, but then I was like, eh. And it's like, it still would have been more resources and more points. But yeah. Hmm. yeah, that's not efficient either. Dang it. <sighs> what can I do? Can I do? All right. Well, I think the first thing we're going to do. Is. Need to get on other colors, I think, as well. Yeah, I know that's what I need but to do. I too. still don't think I can get enough. I need to get on black one and a brown one. Yeah, so these spots. Yellows are all these gone. Te these terraforming units are really hot right now because there were two victory points, or just spending ore. Yeah. Uh, there were victory points, but they're also like that's like I would have rather, you know, spent my power to to grab one of these. Yeah, I know. But it makes sense. I know. I wish with these you could say, like, I don't want them. I know, but... 
Oh, did I have this first? So you couldn't get this one? <laughs> yeah, you pass first. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you need ore, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. now when I do my four charge, it's, oops, it's still only going to Oh, yes, John. Be John says, couch for Rob tonight. <laughs> well, we've got to use the, uh, where is it? Yeah, different plants is, is a thing. Also, just getting more planets. But the problem is I only have five ore. I can buy more of it. <laughs> But let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just start by. Oh, it's still expensive. It's still gonna cost me three. It's still gonna cost me three. Dan says if you lose, a random elbow to the larynx is also a solid choice. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's my bad. I should have just. I should have passed before. It's knowing... not over. It's not. No, thing. knowing it's that over. that base is there, but th that three more ore. There's still crazy advanced tectiles that could give points. There's like end around stuff could change. You could get some terraforming points. Uh, there's points for how you're higher than me. On, you got more points in tracks right now than me, and we're not done yet. So you get points for tracks. You get points no, we're for the resources. Same. We're exactly the same. Oh yeah, we are. Never mind. My bad. Mm -hmm, yeah. Ah. So that evens that out. All right. So that evens out. But there's still more to happen. I so know. you could go up on tracks. You can get advanced tech tiles. You can get tiles down here. Maybe get you points. You can get points for where you're on the tracks. Points for resources. You could get more buildings out. You could cover a few more planets. You can terraform to get more points. You could get. Uh, where's another one? This one has points. This track has points. I don't know if you can get that high, but. No. There's other points out there, Mel. Don't no, I give know, up. I know, I know. And don't tell me already won. Get out of here. You already see that in the future. You are now an official Eurogame pro. Mm -hmm. If you can, at the start of the final round of Eurogame, go, you won. No, I, You're I a freaking think... genius. Like, mind blown. You can see so much. I can't. No, I can see things already that can give you quite a bit of points. And I was just banging. Oh, yeah. And don't forget this free action. Joseph is reminding us of uh, free action. So you could do the whole thing yeah, uh, of like, just destroy a power, yeah. put a power in there. So if you need to desperately get an action or or get some resources or something, uh, yeah. it's there. Yeah, at this don't point, give up. At this point, We're matter. almost done. Don't just give up no, in no, the no. last round. No, I'm not giving up. I can Jeez. just be that. You guys back a quitter? Come on. No, this, I'm not quitting. This is your champion over here? This is who you're cheering for and she's a quitter? Mm -mm. Come on, guys, hype her up. Give her, give her a shot. Give her some tips. Give her something. Build up her confidence. No, no, uh, it's fine. Mel is pulling a Rob. Yes, exactly what I'm saying. Don't be me. <laughs> Don't be me. Feigning weakness to lo oh yeah yeah what I do yeah pretending uh, it's all over. I can't figure it out, and then I just secretly am planning my backstab moment at the end where I cross the finish line after I tie your shoelaces together. Yes, yes. So don't give up. All right, well, I think the first thing I'll do is build a mine here. First, I need to spend three because I'm at the top of that track. Three ore, one, two, three, to make it habitable. That'll give me six points because I spent three. Oh, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. Uh, three. Six points. Yeah. Uh, so this goes to... Six. Then I need to spend one... You're beating me. Two gold. Oh, my God, you're beating me. Just like that. Then I get to go on the brown planets. <sighs> okay, go ahead. I will charge for power. One, two, three. Go ahead. I should have taken that one, dang it. Go ahead. And then I got one more of these. Mm. Buy QICs, which could. I just go up on that track and it'll give me one. Okay, let's do let's charge four power first, three here, and one. Okay. Um Can this give me power? Three of that? Yeah, okay. Three of those can give me. I'm gonna spend two ore and I'll spend 
six, six gold to upgrade. Let's upgrade. Yeah, I can't get really in your neighborhood. Let's just upgrade there. Mm -hmm. Bring that one back. Go ahead. I'm going to spend for free four gold to gain a QIC. Okay. Now I will spend, I'm going to build a mine here. First, I need the range from the QIC from here. Okay. Then I need to spend, oh, hold on. I can't, I can't do that yet. Can't do that yet. Can't do that yet. I need to get more ore first. Okay. So. so I need how many? I need three, four. I need four. So I need three more. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Enough. Or I go one. Oh, there's tips in the chat for you for free power and stuff. Uh, One, two, four, Dan's five. asking, Rob, how many coaches do you own? Uh, only one matters, the comfy one. <laughs> oh, that can do for four. I know, I want to look, but I kind of want to see if I can just figure it out. <laughs> which is why I'm not looking yet. I wasn't reading the chat. I'm thinking about my damn next turn, Dan. Two, uh, let two, me go back two. up and find all, all what you guys are saying. But Mel can also turn her head up before she actually takes a turn, then reads chat, finds out you guys recommended something awesome, and then goes, oh, No, I... I'm trying to figure it out on so my I'm own. So I'm telling Mel to read it now, whether she does it or not. No, I'm trying to figure it out But if I read it, it to her, I'm just going to interrupt her thought process if she doesn't care about chat. So there you go. Your, your almighty leader, Mel, doesn't even care to read your chat. I care, but I just want to see if I can figure it out. One, two, three, <laughs> Thanks, four, Candy. Five, see you later, buddy. Maybe six. Maybe <laughs> six. Could be seven. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten. Eleven doesn't matter. I could put five power into here with this, which would give me six. I could then spend. Can I put five power in there? Like one away. One oh, in. doing the discard yeah, the free I action. Have ten. Yeah, yeah. I have eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I could. Then spend. I could spend five power for the two QIC, or sorry, the two terraforming points. Then I would only need to spend two to upgrade this, which would then only cost me three. And then, yeah, let's do that. Because then I would still have money left over, I think. So we're going to do that. One, two, three, four, five. Then I will spend five of the six here. Oh. oh, I can't do that yet. Sorry, sorry. I have to do this first. One, two, three, for one. Now I do this because I wouldn't have had enough. One, two, yeah. Now I will spend five. Okay, okay this is your action. Build, now you need to build a mine and pay for it. Build a mine here. Okay. Spend the QIC. To, I have to. I had range, two. Yeah. I have to spend one more because it only cost me one. Yeah. And then it cost me mine. two and one. That's okay. Have mine on it. And then I get to put one. I did. Sorry. And then I get to put one on here. So you did three terraforming, right? So three, you get six yeah. victory points. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Okay. And you're on new planet type. Did you mark it? I did. Did you move all the tracks uh, around? However they no, need to be? I think I should be at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I just can't get on. I don't think I can get on the blue. Okay. Uh, so I Maybe am going I to uh, spend three power. And I'll take this one to get a terraforming. Three range away to go to here. I'll spend one and then one, two to put a mine on an orange. 
I'll give you a token to put it on the orange planet there. Mm -hmm. I will take two points for the terraforming one unit I did. And did you move me up on the I different did. planet types yep. track? We can double check. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Great. So uh, we, you are in the lead by one planet type. Oh, and I put another planet down. Uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen buildings for me. Oh, you need another me. one. <laughs> okay. Okay, and I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Okay. I think you're gonna. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now let's do. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm going to spend four, one, two, three, four, knowledge. I have to go up on this one because it's the closest to where I am getting to the top. So that gives me three right away. One, two, three. Go ahead. Uh, what did you do? I just spent knowledge to go up there and it gave me three. Oh, power. three purples? Three purples. Okay. I'm going to spend three ore, one, two, three, and five gold, one, two, three, four, five, to put out a research thing in my jinger. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that down here. So we'll go back. And there is something involved there. Oh, yeah, a tactile. A tactile. I take this one, it's two points for every little building I have. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. If I take this one, it's four for every uh, trading station, which is only three, so that's twelve, so that's not as good. This gives me six, because I only have two federations. This one I don't care, this one I don't care. This one give me a one-time shot of five gold and a QIC. No, I'll take the one that I think gives me more. I'm going to take this advanced tactile. I'll uh, put it on this one, I guess, to cover it up. So I, I said one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, seven. Seven times two, 14 points. One, two, three, four, uh, 56. And more is 66. And that'll allow me to move up one single track, which I'm going to move up. I feel like this one. You can't buy that, Rob. Says, got to do it next to it. What? Got to be next to it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not on four or five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I forgot that part. One, two, three, four. Uh, no, it was like that was fifty six. I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, no. no, no. Minus four more. Yeah, you're right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I can't pick from any one. It's only the ones that I'm in four or five in. Yeah. So it's this one or it's this one. All those stink. I see. Yeah, I forgot about that part. Um, so this one I could take for six points. Or this one, every time I put down a uh, mine, it gives me three, which is probably not going to happen much this round. So I probably should take this one. Oh, I could take one of these tectiles too, right? Um, Not the right tactile though. Mm, I'll take this one. Yeah, I'll take this one because I want to go up in this track. I know that could do it too. But I'll take this one for seven points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll bump me up on this track to make my terraforming a tad cheaper. And. Uh, and that, I think, is all that happens there. All right, go ahead. Sorry, guys. No, that's okay. Yeah, I messed that up. I forgot about that part. That's okay. All right. Oh, one shy on this one. That's so annoying. Okay. 
Yeah, the seven points is more Joseph. I was thinking for the point score, but I like the flexibility if I take that one at six points, but then I could have bumped up a different track. And I was not sure, but I think if I'm going to try to, to use terraforming, which is worth points now, I might as well make terraforming cheaper so I spend less ore. Maybe I can upgrade another building, get another tectile, then I can still grab this after. I, I, I don't know. It's like, you, know, you can go all these different ways, but I don't want to sit there and like math out every path because there's even other things you can do. But yeah, we'll just roll with that. Oops. Uh, one, two, four. Okay, which would give me another four. Or I do that and it would give me three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points is better than four points. I don't think I can get any more buildings. Uh, no, not true. You can take an advanced tactile and move up a track. My understanding was you could actually move up any track from taking an advanced tactile. Uh, oh, pass me the yeah, book. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I thought that was a thing. Unless I'm wrong. I, I might be wrong. I thought we were talking about that yesterday. Uh... Let's find if we can find it. What action is that? It's action five. No. Tactile is from building, right? Mm -hmm. Don't think I can do just while you're doing that, I'm just trying to think. I don't think I can do an upgrade at all where I can get a tactile. Yeah. Because I need three. Yeah, while well, you're doing that. Yeah, right here in the rules, uh, on the right, so this is under gaining a tactile, just, just for making sure we're on the right page. Gaining a tactile. Um, it says, if you take one of the six tactiles below, directly below your research area, you can advance only in the research area above it. You cannot advance. Then if you take one of the three tactiles in the lower row, you can do any, any area of your choice, basically advance in any row. And then here, let's see, instead of taking a standard tactile, you could take an advanced tactile, but there's some restrictions to that. Obviously, this is what I forgot was I have to be on level four or five of that same track. You have to have a token you can flip um, to get it. Oh, but it did say it in the blue bullet point. Where is it? That you're looking for. Oh, yeah. When, when you, you take an advanced tactile, you may advance in any research area. Yeah, right there. Right there, right there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm right. Joseph's wrong. So put my name on the box. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, good, good call bringing it up though, because I, I could have been wrong. I, I didn't know if I just like misremembered too, because uh, I haven't read the rules for a couple days. But uh, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, and the way also oh, I remember yesterday when I talked about it. The reason why I remember it um, here, I'll show you. The reason why I remember it is because it's still a tactile, so you advance. But because you can take a tactile when you're in like uh, on level five. It doesn't limit you to it. The way I remember that you can do any one is because if you take this one and you want to advance on the same track, the way I remember is because like, duh, that would be stupid because then if you're already on five and you're taking this tile, you lose that benefit of advancing. But I think that's why they make it so when you take an advanced tile, you can go up in any track uh, because it'd be silly being on level five and taking it, right? Then you would always just take it on level four because you'd be advancing in that same thing. So that little rule... And me trying to remember that that's a thing. That's why that's how I remember that rule was just understanding that, you know, you could do any one because even if you're on five, you'd still get to advance something. And that's how it's different than the ones that are in the same row. Yeah, and you got to, yeah, you got so much cost to it, right? So it's like it makes sense that you get some benefit at least. Okay. So, other than the points on it or whatever. What I could do is I could spend four gold to go up one knowledge and go up on the purple track. It's mm -hmm. one option, which would give me four victory points. My other option is I spend eight gold, gaining two QIC, take the two QIC action there, which would give me three victory points, plus another five, which would give me eight victory points. I feel like those are my only two actions that I can do right now. So I think the eight is better than four. And then that blocks you from getting it as well. So I think I'm going to do that. Going to one. That's doing this two times for free. And then I'll spend those two QIC to do that. 
cover that. Mm -hmm. That'll give me three victory points first, and then one for each planet. One, two, three, and every planet type you're on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, six more. One, two, three, four, five, six more. Yeah, I don't think I can get to blue because I don't have. Yeah. All right. Uh, I am going to. <clears throat> Let's see here. This is last round. Yes. Okay. Um so I'm going to for six or one, two, three, four, five, six or and six money. So down to six from twelve. I'm gonna upgrade this guy. Bring this back. I'll unlock my one time ability of gaining a QIC. I get another tectile. This time. That is good. Another QIC, another ore, probably the ore. I get any one of these. Oh, this would make it easier to build more federations. Yeah, maybe this one. And this track doesn't really do anything for me. I could just take this one, which doesn't do anything with the tech tile. But it lets me go up on whatever track I want. Well, this one would get me a QIC. Uh, even though I probably should wait because I can make a federation. I'm going to take this one and I'll flip one of these greens so that I can take this advanced tectile. Whoops. So this advanced tectile, when I take it, uh, will give me three points for every federation. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I'll advance in one track. Uh, I'll advance on this one, I think. I probably should have took that tactile. No, I'm going to undo that, actually. I'm not going to do this one and lose. One, two, three, four, five, six. I will take... The... I think this one can lead to federations, which is... Better. That's just annoying. As I can get federation, at least this federation could be cheaper because this would be four, five, six. That's one federation here. Just this whole funny business. Yeah, I'm just going to take this one, even though it moves me up this track, which doesn't really do anything but get me a guy former. It's kind of a waste, but I think this tile is probably better for me forming maybe possibly extra federations. Needing less power involved, in theory. Uh, yeah. Dink. Well, then I don't advance. Don't advance on the track. Yeah, this is hard. Um, oh, but then I could get... Oh, all the, all the blue ones are gone. What did you do? <laughs> Where did the blue ones go? Where did the blue ones go? All right, yeah, I'll just take that. I, I don't know if that's the right play, but I'll just do it. All right. Um, I think I'm passing. Yeah, nothing else I can do. Okay. I am done. That doesn't do anything on the pass? No. All right. Um, so now I'll, I could do a federation here. I'll destroy two power, putting down two satellites, because now my um, my indoor theme park, uh, my indoor <laughs> theme park is worth four um, four power because of that, and that's and I can do it for six uh, power make a federation. So one, two, and then four is six. Mm -hmm. I get to take a token. I will take a QIC generating one, uh, which will get me eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That ties up there. I'll take a QIC to be at three. Uh, then I get up that track. It was away. It was away. 
Oh, tactile stuff, right? All right, two ore. They ran out of ore. Go on, new planet, tactile. There's knowledge, QIC. If I fire off this, I get more knowledge. There was something. There was something. Yeah, I probably just messed up there, but um Oh, QIC for ore. Maybe that's the play. Or a federation with a whole bunch of power. Can I do that? These guys are not close enough yet. And they're not worth enough. Six gold, two ore. Could be another one of these, which goes two, three, four, five. Not enough for a federation, one off. But if I get this lost planet involved, that could be another federation play. But I don't think that's going to happen if I... Yeah, I'll throw a QIC away, I think, for an ore. Probably should have just taken this ore one. Yeah, sorry. I will lose a victory point. I'll just take this ore one instead. So I have one less QIC, one less victory point. On two ore mm -hmm. instead. And just restricts me less. And then I will uh, work. Yeah. Then I will um oh six gold, that's a problem. Gold no. Yeah, maybe I can't do what I want to do. I just upgrade a different building. This might work. Uh, probably not. Okay, so I will spend one, two, three ore, and five gold going down to one, and I'll just upgrade. I don't know. I don't think it matters. Upgrade one of these. That'll give me a tech tile. A tactile I'm going to take. So now I'll take this tactile because I'm on four here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have three Federation tokens now. So I will get nine points going to 75. I'm going to take that one. And i got to flip this to take it, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I flipped that already. And yeah, I think I've flipped one too many because I've only crossed one line. And I've taken two tech or one tech tile, right? So I should only have flipped two ever. I think I didn't flip back when oh, I like yeah, undid, when you that, undid one. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when I take that, I'm going to go up this tech track, which I'll flip this one to do. And that should give me the lost planet, which I can put, I don't know, somewhere here. Because I have a range of four now. So I could kind of put it here and maybe I have enough power to connect and make some kind of weird federation. Possibly I'm one away from doing it. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, five. But I don't think I have enough to do some tricks to get another one, but uh, we'll see. So, um, yeah. And... Yeah, one gold, one ore, QIC for ore, I don't have enough gold. Oh yeah, I put my little, so this is a planet type. Mm. Yeah, I don't. Oh, a QIC. QIC. And then I spend these three to fire off another token. I can fire off uh, fire off seven points and two ore, I guess. I don't know if that helps or matters. Uh, but seven points does. 
And I think I've spent I think I've spent my stuff. Uh yeah, I'll just end. Um uh, pass. All right. Okay. Um let's double check uh planets we've covered. I think we've been keeping track. I think so. so I'm not on red that I know of, so yeah, I shouldn't have a token there. You're not on red and, and I'm blue. I'm not on blue. Yeah, and I am not on blue and yellow. Uh, yeah, because I have all the yellows yeah. and blues. And Nobody blues. touched any of the four blues. No. Wow. No. Okay, so we're. Oh, but then I have a lost planet. So how many months? One, two, three, four, five, six. I should be at on that track, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm also on six. And you're on six. One, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five. Six. Oh, I couldn't see this. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right. I tried to put it like off to the side. I know. Yeah, like that one colors. is hard to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, any game scoring Oops. then on sorry. that one? We are tied. Tied. So we split uh, thirty points. We get fifteen each. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. That's eighty-seven plus another ten is ninety-seven. And then you get one, two, three, four, five. That's seventy-two up to eighty-two. Okay, and then okay. the next one is buildings. Yep, you got that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yep, you got that one. And then you have, but where are you with the AI nine. though? Oh, I'm behind the AI. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I'm last. So you get 6 points. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, you get 18. 18. 1, 2, 3. And another 15. And then this one, so the tracks, so you get 12 for this one. And then you get 8 Eight. for this one. And I get 12 for this one. And 12 again? And 12 for this one. And that's 29, 39. And then, is that all the tracks? Oh, you, do we get your 8 for this? Yeah, yep. we did, right? Yep. Uh, and then resources. And I just get one. You get one, and then I get uh, one. one. Awesome. That's it, right? Yep. I think that's it. I think we scored it properly. I don't know. Not sure. Not sure. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. That's the game. So that's a uh, two-player of Gaia Project. Uh, which I feel is definitely better than multiplayer. Yeah. yeah, I don't care to play it again. Got to keep in mind where it's coming from. Uh, I have an awesome wife that <laughs> plays four point three five plus complexity games with me. I have a daughter who I could even teach these kind of games to, and have played four point something complexity games with. So I have two awesome ladies in my house that will play games with me even during a pandemic. Not to mention awesome friends like Kyle, Justin, and other family members, Nick and Ashley, etc., who will even just play on camera. Not to mention other people who won't play on camera, but we play with. So, and when there's not a pandemic. So, I ha this is a game that I would love to play more with other people. Um, but the solo part is good. So, if you only can want to play board games by yourself, you're a solo gamer at heart, you have no one to play with you. Uh, you live somewhere where there's no board game stores, you can go meet people, you're not going to conventions, you're not playing with people online. Uh, this is a great solo game still, but for my solo tastes, like I will play solo if the game is like really amazing solo. The solo mode is kind of the same as the regular rules. It does not an extra rule book, weird things to memorize, but it is crazy that they turn this awesome complex multiplayer game into a solo variant. Like uh, hands, you know, I, I give them credit for that for sure. But man, I love playing this multiplayer and I can see why people would say it's better multiplayer and maybe better at three or four players. Because a bigger board, yeah, more interaction. Yeah. I want to play this at three and four players for sure. Especially taking the tracks yep. with three or four players, yeah. But this is good if you're you're leveling up your game collection, your game group, you know, your three or four players you play games with are ready for that, that ratchet up in complexity. And maybe your game group doesn't really like player interaction and take that and combat and destroying and player elimination. This doesn't have any of that stuff in it. It's just like, yeah, you might have stole my planet. You might have taken my action. You might have got to the top of my track. Whoopie do. I can still do this. I can do that instead. And I yeah. can do these things to get points. Um, 
And it definitely looks cool on the table, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I don't really feel like I'm playing a space game so much. I, I, I know. Mean, the theme's not really who cares about the yeah, theme. That's the like thing. you're saying, you could call these whatever you want. And... and again, there's Terra Mystica, which is supposed to be very similar to this game. That This game was a, basically a reskin of, is what people keep saying. Uh, this is like a space reskin of the fantasy game, or fantasy painted on theme of Terra Mystica. Uh, so if you want that kind of version of it. But I, I think it's a really good game. Uh, it's heavy Euro strategy, point salad, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, very thinky. But yeah, the variability is crazy. The random setup stuff. The many, many factions in the box. The fact that like you don't need an expansion for this game is crazy. And there's just so many hours, so many gameplay uh, hours of you playing this game and trying out different factions. Or different out, strategies. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to say. Yeah. It's different strategies. If you're playing some solo, different AI, different players to play against. You know, mm -hmm. Even Mel and I could just play this game again. Do a random board setup or whatever the, the how you set up a board. Set up our planets different, like our starting minds different. Yep. Have different factions, different end of round goals, different bonus goals uh, in different order and different types. The different um, advanced tiles, different regular tech tiles. You know, Did these these change the game uh, round very much too. Yep. The round boosters, whoever yeah. takes which ones, which ones are available in a game. Yeah. It is so crazy, the amount of variability in these games. Thank yeah. you, John. See you later, buddy. Thanks, John. Uh, but yeah, man, it's nuts. Juan saying, no, Rob. Uh, Gaia Project did not a reskin of Terra Mystica. Similar mechanics, but significant changes for many, myself included. Gaia Project is far superior. And that's what I say at the beginning of the stream. I don't know Terra Mystica enough. Yeah. But a lot of people say a lot of the mechanics are very close. But there is some refinements and changes and things. Obviously, a different theme. And it seems to be rated higher on BGG. But that could be because of the solo mode. And that could be because it's newer. And maybe production quality and stuff is better too. Because the other game's like five years older. Um, but there are a lot of people that talk online I do see that say they're similar enough that you don't need both. Um, but yes, and some people will think one maybe is better than the other, I would assume. But um, it comes to taste, I would assume too. But... John B says, the solo challenge this month, I'm assuming in the one player guild on BGG, is uh, playing a faction against themselves, just using a different color. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can use the AI uh, to play one of uh, seven different factions. Okay. But then you would need to use the color components if you're playing like yellow versus yellow. Uh, but you could just use the white, right? Yeah, you would just yeah. change it and use a different color. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, is our stream dying or something? Oh no, is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's Jace Jason saying you keeps taking a number two for him, so uh, <laughs> that's probably our cue to get out of here. But <laughs> Dan says, "Thanks for the Euro, Rob. Now get back to your regularly scheduled swords, shields, and loot." Uh, tomorrow, we're no swords, no shields. Nope. Tomorrow's Arkham Horror the Card Game. We're continuing our campaign playthrough every Sunday. If you're looking for Arkham Horror the Card Game, some blind playthroughs, that's what we're doing, having some fun. We're going through Path to Carcosa right now. You can go catch up on that. You can watch our other playthrough series uh, in our playlist section, youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Lots of live playthroughs and recorded playthroughs and stuff in there. Um, if you want to catch out our future live playthroughs, uh, subscribe right here. Subscribe. Uh, and hit that notification bell so you do not miss a live stream. You can set reminders for upcoming streams that are already there. Uh, check out the playlist section down below. Uh, you'll find other videos related to this game usually in there. Um, and what else? Yeah, Kate. Uh, <laughs> Arkham Horror decks. Uh, I looked on Thursday in the Discord. I was going to just take the three decks that have been posted and make a poll. Uh, but then I saw Bob asking you about a deck and you said you were kind of busy and you weren't sure if you had a deck you could build or whatever. So I was going to wait. Then I forgot to go back and check. But even then, it would have been on Friday and I don't think it would have been enough time for like for a, poll? a poll or researching the decks, finding out what's better and whatever. So I, I don't know how I'm picking a deck. But if you guys have come together and figured out the deck I should play and just based on the those of you, I thought that's what was going to happen was... Mm -hmm somebody submits a deck you all work together on it and come up with a final deck if you did that that's amazing i'll go and build that deck right now oh there's five decks to choose oh, from no. yeah I, I don't know what i'm supposed to do maybe, now, maybe now, just... I, now i'm like a parent i have to pick my favorite i have to pick from my favorite child 
You're making me, you're forcing me to choose? What if you just did like a random where it's like a... But that's, I don't know, but I, I like, I, yeah, I don't know. I thought, I thought the, the minds were going to come together and be like, no, no, this is the deck. And everyone kind of gets a, their own little, their own little vote on what cards are in there. Bob, you're asking a player who doesn't know the whole card pool to just pick one. But you could just pick one randomly. Like, yeah. we, we could take the names of all the decks. I, I was just going to pick Yogi because he was the first one to submit then. That's the way I would pick because he was, he was quick and dirty with it. But then I feel bad. Everyone else spent time coming up with decks and and and, and tweaking and feedback and stuff. So it's hard. But uh, I can look at them and read just the description. But then I'll probably still pick Yogi's because maybe it's the funniest description. But maybe I haven't read maybe the other it's descriptions. Maybe not though, yeah. I know. His, his description was awesome. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. You know you're <laughs> gonna pick Kate's deck. Just do it now. I I like what I've played so far from Kate, and I know she's making creative decks because I can tell from the feedback in the last playthroughs that her decks are definitely more creative and not the the meta norm, yeah. which I think is awesome because then it makes our playthroughs a little spicy and different, maybe. So that's kind of cool. But then also we've played Kate's decks already, so I feel like maybe giving someone else's deck some love. I could do that. I, I don't know. But I feel bad. Like I mean, you could put a poll up for just like a quick so the problem The problem with, yeah, I could do a poll and just build a deck in the morning. But then what am I posting? Like uh, five decks and then people got to click in each deck and read the decks and pick one. And I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. we could. Will anyone do that today? Like in, in those few hours? But even if only three people do, then they're oh, that's picking true. the decks and not What if you? it's one vote for each? You know what I mean? You're what making if, it too What difficult. if the only people that vote is the deck creators and they just <laughs> vote for their own deck and then possible. everyone's tied at one and then we're sitting there like still in a problem. I don't know. I mean, we can. Or we just put the, literally just put the name of the deck. I wouldn't say who built the deck. No, not. I, I would try to keep it blind. No, but literally like not even a deck list. You just put the name of the deck <laughs> and they're doing it random. No, Jason, I understand reading isn't hard for you. And I know, I know a lot of Arkham Horror players have been playing for years. You could open up five deck lists oh, in different yeah. tabs. And kind of easily go, yep, this one has my favorite cards in it, or this one I can tell how it plays. But for most of our viewers who don't know the game well enough and just kind of watch us play along that, I want everyone to kind of be able to vote on a deck. So it is kind of funny to give each deck like a name and then people vote on names. I just, the Without time, a deck list? I just feel like the time isn't enough. Reading is only hard for Bob. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if everyone has like a description in the deck of how the deck works, that would, that would make it easier. Um... You well, know you what? You had a hand in Yogi's second deck. Just go with that one. Okay. That's what I was thinking. I'll go with the deck that... the. You know what I was thinking? The four people who submitted decks, they all can vote on decks, but not their own. And that's the deck that I run with. So it's like, the even though you created your own deck, you can't vote for yourself. And then maybe from that, the four deck building minds will come on a consensus on which deck to play with. But uh, if you all work together on Yogi's second deck, that's probably the one to take if, if Bob's Bob's being truthful. Or unless Bob's just lying and trying to get me to pick the deck he thinks is the best. <laughs> no, but uh, even Kate says Yogi's second deck is hilarious and it came out of our conversation. Okay, I'll do that so one then. I'll we're going to take Yogi's okay. second one. Yogi's second deck, done. Yogi's okay. second deck, done. But we will do, we are going to do for the next playthrough series of Forgotten Age, we have to do some kind of deck competition yeah, where everyone votes this. on decks, where we have weeks to do it. Like people can read through them and read the, and people come up with good write ups for your deck and even a funny name. And then we can, ha you know, like we'll just be put up the vote as like vote on the deck by name. And maybe we try to keep it somehow where the decks that are submitted to us are submitted privately so nobody knows who built them. And then uh, like, I'll put them in my account and share them that way. So there's no way they can be linked to your account or anything. And I'll put the description in. And then I'll just put up the decks, like vote for these decks. And so no, you know, and we can have it have it that way. Hmm. We probably have to start thinking about this sooner than later, right? Because aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, we'll five? do it. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we may have to talk about this tomorrow. Uh, Jason says Arkham Horror and Hilarity. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm screwed, I know. <laughs> so if you guys can start creating my third character's deck that I'll need to play as when I play this deck and die tomorrow, uh, that would be great. So if you can start planning your next character's decks, that'd be awesome. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just because the deck's good or not good doesn't mean I play it good or bad. Like, my play style or the choices I make could make a great deck go the, to the crapper the deck had nothing to do with the situation that happened we won't it was my choices anything. yeah it was my choices yeah it was yeah. one of us it was gonna happen to one of us 
Uh, well, I don't know. I could have made choices, maybe. I don't know. We could have. Yeah, we won't yeah. spoil anything. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. There are definitely choices we could have made for sure <laughs> that maybe got it so. As long as that's shocking, I mean. <laughs> I, we haven't looked at them yet. Yeah, we haven't looked. We have to look tonight. Uh, but yeah, tune in tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, where we'll have the deck. We'll talk about the deck at the beginning uh, and the new character that we had voted on that won our poll. Uh, thanks to those who support the channel, voted on those polls. Uh, from our members, producers, supporters, all all the awesome people that are keeping this channel going and, and increasing the game collection and the equipment and stuff. Um, yeah, thank you for, for voting and choosing my next character I'm playing with in the Arkham Horror playthrough. And now we have a deck. Thank you to the hive mind of our producers that are building decks for us on our private Discord. You guys are crazy. I love it. And uh, yeah, you'll see that deck tomorrow. So tune in for that. It should be interesting. Me trying to figure out a deck on stream. Um, Oh, Kate's going to miss it because of Mother's Day. Oh, yeah, it's Mother's Day tomorrow. Real mothers play Arkham Horror on Mother's <laughs> Day, all right? So, Kate, you better be playing Arkham Horror tomorrow somehow. No, that's fine. That's fine. Enjoy, Kate, though. Enjoy yes. your day. Yes, yes. Enjoy Mother's Day. Uh, do you want to take tomorrow off? Should we just cancel the stream? It's no. Mother's Day? No, no, it's fine. What are you going to do? It's fine. We can we go can, out and do... Oh, anywhere. never mind. We, we can't. can't do anything. We're not going to see my mom or your mom. That's so. true. It's all good. <laughs> yep, it's all good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all right. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to start working on another game for next week. Maybe yep. two. I will see. Um, so stay tuned. But yeah, thanks for watching <laughs> us play Gaia Project and check out this like modern classic. I don't know what you want to say. It's a, like a four-year-old game, but already it's like number eight on Board Game Geek. So it's like a very loved game. It's definitely kind of a classic feel to it for sure. Yeah, I can see there's lots uh, of variety in it. You can replay it, lots of replayability on it, which is great. And Kate said she'll be either playing Pandemic or Wingspan. Yeah, this game feels like a more advanced Wingspan. That's that's this yeah, is the vibe a, I get yeah. from this game. Yeah, it's in that Euro engine building kind of idea, but it's like just more advanced. But yeah, I get the Wingspan vibe from this. Uh, yeah, I can see that. It gives me that kind of feeling. Yeah. Every day is Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay sure <laughs> <laughs> anyways we're gonna get out of here thanks a lot for watching enjoy the rest of your weekend if you're not gonna be here for arkham Horror tomorrow uh watch out for other streams being scheduled on the channel like i said hit that subscribe button hit the like button to help other people find these videos on youtube helps with the youtube algorithm set the notifications on that's beside the subscribe button if you want to be notified for all our upcoming streams um, and if you want to support us uh, monetarily, the links for all that stuff is down in the video description. Thank you, everyone who supports the channel, and we're going to get out of here. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.